Hello, everyone. It is time for the Mouthful Podcast, episode 179, the real episode 179. I, this sounds horrible, dude. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I quit. I quit. Fuck this shit. This shit, I'm out. Give me this. You're keeping this. Keep rolling. It is rolling. It's it it us. Who are we? All right, guys. This is Chaos Reaper. I'm just uh, <laughs> signing up here again. This is a wildly different podcast because Dream decided to torture us tonight. Yes, but the torture is you don't know what the torture is. You have to tell us yes, later right. on. You're what gonna is, have what is it that we're being, uh, tortured with here at the Mouthful Podcast? <laughs> There are, uh, two, there are two particular things, major things. There could be a lot of minor, but there are two major things that don't don't look. It's like comparing, you know, it's like comparing two images, and you have to find the difference. That's exactly or, what I was thinking about. <laughs> you have to you have to listen to the previous episode or any other episode in the past, and you got to listen to this one, and then you got to find out what's different about it. What is particularly odd, <laughs> aside from the. <laughs> Terrible, terrible intro. Yeah, the horrible intro that your host here, Mad Dog, did. Uh, <laughs> apologies for that. That voice that you heard a moment ago, of course, was Chaos. Thank you, Chaos, for taking over and helping a brother out. Uh, and then the other voice, of course, the uh, torturer for our evening is Mr. David Santos, a.k.a. Dream Twister. Peacock! Oh, really? Uh, I can't believe you started with that. Peacock indeed, guys. <sighs> what we normally do, guys. First off, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please go to Facebook and locate Good Game Bracketed Something. <laughs> 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 Somebody's dying next to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the peacock is dying next to you. Oh my god, that was uh, that was totally worth it. <laughs> so yes, the, as the peacock says, please go to good game and uh, follow us there, and please like, subscribe, to share the podcast with everybody. Sir, are you okay? He is dying. He's, he's laid out on the floor. He's laid on the floor. This is what he gets for drinking some Alize. Uh, on a Friday night. What we normally do, guys, when we're not fucking around like this, is we first go into what we've been up to, move on into some various news items, and then finish with our hot topic of the week. This week's hot topic! <laughs> I, I don't know what are we doing here. I'm so confused. Yes. This week's hot topic, guys, should we be allowed to sell our game's catalog? What that basically means. Right? Because we have... Plenty of games that we can trade in, go to GameStop for as long as GameStop's going to be open for. Uh, and, you know, trade in and make me make a little money back, trade it in for a different game. But as things go to digital, what can we do with that library? Can we do anything? Is Are we basically just throwing money down a hole uh, and not being able to reclaim any of it back? What do you think, sir? Real quick. That'll be our hot topic. But what do you think? Me? Well... Yeah. Because apparently Peacock over there is still recuperating. Quickly, yes, I believe we should. Oh, interesting. Good okay. point. All right. Oh, uh, nice. Mr. Peacock, uh, our hot topic, oh. now that you uh, survived the uh, out yeah. moment. Still alive there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, twister. so what happened? All right. <clears throat> Let's drop all pretenses. What's happening is, I told these guys this before we started recording, that... We're not allowed. We're not allowed to say GG, and we're not allowed to say, and we're bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as Mad Dog was trying to say, then where to find us on 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 YouTube, and realize that he couldn't say the name of, of, of the YouTube site. It just, I was taking a sip of Alex A, and it just went. Facebook. It just went. Oh my god. It just went on the wrong hole. <laughs> your your brain is is crossed. Okay. Oh Big yeah, Dude, yes. Big time, but it was totally worth it. Yes, I saw oh, it before. Yeah, I was absolutely loving. I was he kept saying YouTube. <laughs> I know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good, so good, so good. 
All right, which part of the show are we at? <laughs> we are at what we have been up to. Oh, okay, uh, we're going to let uh, this guy clear his throw out. Mr. <laughs> Chaos <laughs> Reaper, what have you been up to, sir? Well, I finished I finished my Hero Academia. I right now got to wait for the fourth season. Damn, is there's not... four seasons? Well, no, there's not four. The fourth one is coming. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's means. Yeah, and yesterday I got to the final boss of Iceborne. Oh, you shit. did? Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't. I didn't clear him. I didn't slay him. But you're there. I'm there. As I said before, I'm using a great sword. I'm not sure I've said this before, but I've been told by numerous people that that is the absolutely worst weapon that I can use when I'm fighting like seventy-five percent of these monsters. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mainly you because, made it there. yeah, no, I I made it the whole way with the great sword. I I fought the new um, elder dragons. I fought the Nunar Gigante. I've defeated them all with my great sword. I haven't done it all in one shot. I, I the previous um, elder dragon that I defeated took me a solid three tries, like three different quests to actually down him. And the new Valhazak I managed to do in one go, but he did faint in me twice. But this last one, dude, I mean, like I don't that. know if I should go into, like, sort of spoilers here. Or should I just leave it here? The, I mean, we're talking about a monster. It's not like it's a story element, right? I mean. Oh, no, it's just a very interesting fight. It's, it's a two-faced fight. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's nothing. I mean, Man. even if you could tell us the method, you know, there's, it doesn't mean we're going to be able to, you know, replicate it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, okay, it's a two-faced fight, and the first one is just this giant lumbering stone dragon, right? And you kind of, like, break him apart. Suddenly there's an actual dragon under all those rocks. And he's not that slow, but he is freaking huge. And, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get past it. I, I, I got pretty far into it. But the way the quests are set up, you go from fighting Nargigante straight into the last fight. Even though they're two different quests, because you don't have to go through Nargigante every time. So wait, believe you don't me, get to restock. Yeah, well, if you if you lose the entire quest when you go back, you don't have to go through Nargigante again. At oh, least, okay, okay. at least, yes. yeah, dude. Let me tell you, Nargigante, he is one angry little puppy. Okay, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Dude, he's so much worse. Ah, damn. He actually fainted me. Uh, he actually failed me once. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think it was the second By time. By yourself? Are you doing this solo, or you, you, you got people Well, to... because I didn't have internet yesterday, the whole day, I did it alone. Damn. Look at you. Just me and my kitty pushing through this when there's... I mean, there are better options, but I have to farm a whole bunch of stuff that... I don't want to because it's just not the kind of weapons I use. So I, I stuck with the with the great sword because the same way as I did the campaign in the vanilla Monster Hunter, I want to do the uh, Iceborne campaign. Mm -hmm. After as soon as I'm done with this monster, I'm I'm gonna go into something easier. Cause this man, I need to farm some of these monsters and I need to do it faster. Yeah, I'm not that. one that's one of the fights. This. One of the fights took me 37 minutes. Holy crap! Yeah, well, the missions are usually up to 50 minutes, right? So that can still... Well, no, I guess you still have to find them. So the whole well, the fight part itself is what took 37 minutes? Well, I knew where he was, so I got to the monster fairly quick. So I can honestly say the fight took 37 minutes. Wow. wow. Yeah, it it's... Holy hell. This felt like a lifetime. That's why the, the first time that he failed me, I really didn't want to do it again. Because I spent like 30 minutes and I failed. And I was like, and I got to start this all over again? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, you have to. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we are so close. Yeah, dude. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've done. Again, I had no internet. So, well, for at least two days, I had no internet. And uh, I, I tried playing Mortal Kombat offline. And the only thing you can do is the story or the towers. So I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty good. So I go to Survivor Tower, which it, it, every fight, the health carries over. You get healed a little bit, but you don't get fully healed. So, and I go, I put it on very hard. I pick Sub-Zero in my variation. I'm like, I got this, got this. No, that is impossible, my friend. Really? The computer reacts to things that a human player will never, just can't. Right? 
Like, you get jabbed. Like, I was doing the overhead, which has a bit of a startup, but to normal players, they tend to just block it because they're not expecting it. Suddenly, you know, overhead, the computer jabs you out of it. Like, you'll throw a punch and just knock you out of it. Like, are you serious? Consistently, yeah. it will do it. You know what's funny? You mentioned that because I posted this week, you probably saw it, the fact that oh. another fighting game, a very popular fighting game, does exactly that. It literally cheats in inhuman, inhumanly possible ways. And that game is Street Fighter 2. Yeah, because the whole point of, of one of the main things of Sub-Zero playstyle is it, it's a 50-50 style. He can either go low or he can either go overhead. You know, mm-hmm. so you have to block low or high. But the computer knows what you're doing. So you, there's no there's no mix ups here. Yeah. There, you, there's you can't do them because the computer is reacting to everything. Yeah. Or so, it's cheating. Right, which is basically cheating cuz let's yeah. be honest. So, I failed at the very first fight I died. So, okay, you know what? All right, all right. I'm just going to put it on hard and try this again. Got my ass handed to me again horribly. Like, god damn, what am I supposed to do? So I put it on medium. Maybe you're and, not as good as you thought. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down to medium, and I managed to do it, but I restarted a lot of fights, some of them a lot of times. Oh, wow. It was really frustrating, and that was about all I played on Mortal Kombat. After I jumped right back into Monster Hunter, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to stay over here. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Hunter, you can play offline. Yeah, yeah. So, and, I, yeah. and I'm used to it, you know? Yeah. So, because the way I fight in Monster Hunter, especially with a great sword, I try to mount. So I try to find places to jump off. Yeah. Whether it's a wall or a ledge or a, a wedge beetle or even one of those birds, which the birds are kind of hard because they're not consistent. Anything that I can find to mount a monster, I will. So that's that's, cool. that's, that's all of what I've been up to. Awesome, uh, Mister Peacock. <laughs> oh my goodness, Peacock Twister. Peacock Twister, what? I'm- are you still? Uh, uh, I'm still. To go? I'm, I'm not, no, I, I, I'm good. I'm recuperating still. Oh my god, I never had to have it actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> too good. It was too funny. It was just too funny. So what have what have I been doing? Uh, I've been playing Control, and unfortunately, I feel like I'm very close to the end. But unfortunately, haven't been able to do that last couple of missions that maybe will get me to see the credits because I got busy all of a sudden during during the week. But man, if there's a week, if there's a game this this year, they guys and this has been a year of good game of, of, of a lot of good games. If there is a game that you guys should definitely put on your list if you haven't already is Control. It is a it, it's it's a very fun title. It 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 is incredible amounts of fun. You feel like, uh, even though I don't think this character, like, it's meant to look like a total badass or anything like that, but with the stuff that you get, the powers that you, that you acquire and all that, some of those fights, dude, you feel so... uh like badass? Yes. Yeah, it's, they're so rewarding, you know, just to suddenly grab someone in midair and just slam it against a wall or something like that, or just grab a missile in midair... <clears throat> Send it back to whoever shoot it. it dude, it's so good. It's so good. So I'm at, I'm at the point uh, there that I'm about to finish it. Hopefully, I'll be able to get on it this week. <clears throat> but that's all I've been doing for gaming in reality. Just control. I watch a movie. No I shit. don't know. How, I don't know how to describe this movie other than I I had a really good time with this thing. Sir, have you heard of the of the show Between Two Ferns? With, between two ferns. Between two ferns with Zach Galifianakis. Hold on, let me see if I'm right. Oh, Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Galifianakis. Yeah. What Thank the you. hell is that name? <laughs> Zach Galifianakis is. Uh, he's from. He's from a lot of comedies, but he's probably got very popular in the Hangover movies. Oh, uh, that's the glasses. The yeah, the no, the no, no, the the shorter, fatter guy. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's funny they keep calling him fat on this too, and I don't know if 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 if, if, if he warranted. is actually if he's warranted. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not fat, but you know, compared to the compared to the other four or the other three <laughs> Hangover guys. Yeah. You know. So so let me tell you what uh, Between Two Ferns is actually. It, 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 
this is th this movie actually was called Between Two Firms with uh, Between Two Firms the movie. So Jesus. the the, mo the moment I saw the subtitle the movie. I was like, okay, so this is something else, and they made a movie out of it. I need to find out what this is. Of course, I did this after watching the movie and after enjoying it quite a bit, because it was uh, it was funny and, and and kind of stupid, which is what I like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm about. <laughs> it's, it's right, it's right in my jam. Yeah, it's, it's silly and kind of stupid. Uh, that's all me. So the show itself. It's meant to be like a like a talk show host. Like he, he's supposed to be like a talk show host. In this talk show, he is interviewing the celebrities, and I mean, he's interviewing the, the celebrities are, you know, anywhere from whatever it could be, like Justin Bieber or or, or whatever, all the way to the president of the United States, which at the, at that time it was actually um, President uh, Obama. Had been in the show. Also, uh, he did he did one where uh, what's her name show Hillary Clinton even around the time of the campaign and all that. It was crazy. The thing is, the show is very irreverent. The talk show he is basically almost belittling the celebrities, like the one with Justin Bieber. He's like, I'm sorry, I just don't know how to start. I never done a interview with a seven year old. For <laughs> <laughs> <No> example, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, he he he's interview uh, the one where he's interviewing Hillary Clinton. She uh, he he said, "Okay, we're gonna take a break for a pause, and we'll be right back." And the actual uh, the actual pause, the actual commercial was a Trump campaign commercial. Oh wow! Like in the middle of her, <laughs> and then he's at the very end. He's like, "So what's the best time? What's the best way? To we should keep in contact. What's the best way to that I can reach you? Email." <laughs> wow! <laughs> It'll be stuff wow. like that, dude. It's like. It's like, dude. <laughs> so obviously, the, the 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 show. I didn't know about this actually. Uh, this is produced by Funny or Die. Yeah, the yeah. network. Yeah, the network Funny or Die. Yeah, which is who's who's uh, who's uh, the guy running that? Um, what's his name? It, it sounds like a, it sounds like a comedy horror network. Will yeah. Ferrell. It's Will a, Ferrell. It's a, yeah, Will Ferrell. It's a, uh, it's a Will Ferrell joint, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, so the, the movie is basically <laughs> a take on. A, it's supposed to be like a documentary, more like a mockumentary, if documentary. anything, mm -hmm. about about this, uh, about his, his his show. And it's, I mean, it's to be fair, it is it is a funny movie. It's a cute movie. I I, I would recommend watching it. I would recommend it, at the very least. I would recommend just getting a. Grabbing a couple of the of the skits on on YouTube and watching them, they're usually like what, like five minutes, three minutes, and yeah, yeah, they're, they're just... quick little things, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because the interviews, the interviews themselves are hilarious. He has interviewed like Jennifer Aniston, Tila Tequila. He has interviewed uh, what's this guy? Well, anyway, it's, 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 it mention of celebrities probably has been there. Very, very, very funny movie. I, I will recommend it actually to see it. But that's uh, that's all I have mm, until I cure myself here. <laughs> oh my enough, god! It's it's hurting. It hurts you know to talk how... now. It's just great when you're doing a podcast. You know when you said that uh, how satisfying it is to like grab missiles out of the air and shit with the character mm -hmm. with control. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the reason why I used the great sword in Monster Hunter because it's so satisfying to smack a monster so hard in the face so you uh, knock it out on its ass. Oh but, yeah, because I've done that and I've done it to Elder Dragons even, and it feels just like yes. He is doing a uh, what is it a fist bump in the air? He's like yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> I know. It's, I I love I love games that I make to feel like they have those. Doom was a perfect example of just like yeah, this is awesome. Like fuck yeah, yeah. Like uh, you feel I, the weight behind the head. It's just so solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, um, some of the uh examples of of people that he has the that he has had on on the show, quote unquote. Includes Steve Carell, Hillary Clinton, like I mentioned, Justin Bieber, Paul Rudd, Brad Pitt, uh, Bradley Cooper, Mike, uh, Michael Sarah, Ben Stiller, oh, Jerry sure. Seinfeld, and Cardi B. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld and Cardi B in there. Wow, uh, uh, Natalie Portman, which was hilarious, actually. Yeah, definitely. 
you guys should you should guys should watch a couple of this if you like <laughs> if you guys are into stupid things. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'll check it out. It's on YouTube. And yeah. uh, the movie's on Netflix, right? The movie's on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, oh, right. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The Netflix uh, movie, which is based on Honestly. the little miniseries. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, too, have been playing Control. Yes, you have. And uh, I also finished it. <laughs> I've also, I also heard that you have <laughs> speed run. I did not speed run. <laughs> you speed run the shit out of it. No, I did not speed run it. You started playing it like way, way after I, I played it, uh, or I was playing it, and next thing I know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm at the end also, almost. And I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, this. So right now, if I if I had to say anything, Sekiro would would be my my clear winner uh, for, for game of the year so far. Really? Aside from uh, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Two may be up there, but I love Sekiro, dude. Okay. I love Sekiro. Did you beat Sekiro? Uh, but I gotta tell you, no, I didn't beat Sekiro. But I got pretty far into it. But you know, but you know how I do. So <laughs> you, you, you gotta know, know. Yeah. You know my you know my mo at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> however, Control, I fucking love guys. Yeah, I freaking love Control. Because certain someone has not <laughs> finished it yet, I will you know yes, refrain please. from saying too much. But I will definitely say that I love the eerie story behind it i love how it it is it is like that high sci-fi just madness sometimes you know what i mean and everything about it man it's just the the graphics the way the graphics look on and i'm playing this by the way on a regular playstation 4 um which i will have some complaints to bring up on uh, and I think this is the one thing that kind of holds it back. I'm not sure. Like right now, I feel I'm in the the high of the game, and that's why I feel like, man, this is this is kind of taking over uh, Sekiro as, as my favorite game of the year. But I need time for, to let it settle. I beat the game, but I am still playing um, because the game oh. does continue. It is, you know, years it just continues afterwards, uh, similar to I guess you can say Spider Man, right? So. The the concept behind it is so <laughs> it reminds me of so all these right. old fucking uh, sci fi shows like X Files, um, Twin Peaks. You know what it reminds uh, me of? Uh, Black Fringe, Mirror. Black Mirror, which is another sci fi uh, sci fi show. Um, it is just out there, dude. And then the, yes, so you were mentioning the uh, the combat. The combat is ridiculously fun. Um, there is there is a gun that the character. Uh, essentially, you know, obtains uh, towards the beginning. The gun is a gun that itself changes into other guns, um, and they they form different uh, different types of guns. Right? You have your standard pistol at first, which is still a pretty good uh, stopper of, uh, from enemies. Uh, then you have the one that's called spin, which is more like a more like a let's call it a submachine gun or machine gun. Uh, what's the other one? Splitter, which I think is like the, like a shotgun, like a shotgun. And it's all from this one pistol, you know what I mean? And it automatically reloads. The pistol itself is of some sort of alien descent. You know, we don't even really know where it's from, but it has comparisons in the game to like Excalibur or um, Mjolnir from, from Thor. It's just, God guys, this game is so fucking cool. <laughs> So yeah. freaking cool! I can I I you're saying everybody should do it. I'm saying everybody needs to do this wow. um, because it is it's just what you want from a freaking game, man. It's just it's something so original, you know, to me, and yet so familiar. You know what I mean? Because you know when you look at the overall gameplay, the gameplay is similar. You're finding enemies, and th- there's a story there's a story reason as to why these enemies are armed and stuff like that. So it kind of explains itself. Um, the, the the where you're at the oldest house, which is the 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 bureau's uh base essentially, is a living thing. You know what I mean? So it's not just that's where they're at. It's it's the building itself is a living thing, and it moves and changes, and it's so freaking weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yes. But it's got. Let me tell you, there's a sequence in this game that there's it, perhaps you guys know if you think of a game right and you have a moment in this game where it's like uh just one of the coolest moments in gaming try, i'm trying to think of an example like maybe the 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 for me remember uh dead space 2 
the uh, zero G launch that happens at, in Dead Space Two when he's where he when he's like uh, he's t- he's yelling at Ellie going stay stay down I'll be right there and he shoots himself into space because he's got to get to the other side yeah. and it's just this deep space dive and you got to basically maneuver like like uh, meteor and asteroids that are out there and all this stuff. And that is just a cool, cool moment. You know, it's just this really cool moment. This game has probably one of the coolest gaming moments that I've ever had. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I won't say what it is, obviously, because you just got to experience it, man. It's just, it, it's, it would be a detriment to the game for you to even mention anything more. <laughs> you really just got to experience it. I'm trying it is, very hard to ignore you. <laughs> I know you're trying to ignore me, and I'm sorry, but it's, I can't. I can't. And the funny thing is, you, you may not even know. <laughs> you know, it may uh, not even affect you the same way. But it's just, it's just so cool, man. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm still playing it. Like you know, I already get it. And I'm, I'm still going with it. And I, uh, it's so. Here's here's the bad things. <laughs> uh, I am playing on PlayStation Four. Uh, it does have occasional frame rate hitch. The beauty of this is not bad, like Blythetown bad or something like that. You know what I mean? But it does. It's particularly when you're coming out of a, a like a fast what is it, a fast travel type thing, or if you're coming out of the menus, it's like it takes the game a moment to get everything ready for you to move normally, and so it kind of frames out a little bit. But it's gone quickly. It's not something that sticks. Uh, the other thing, dude, the freaking load times, bro. <laughs> the load times. <laughs> now the load times, realistically, it only happens when you when you're moving from one point to the other. If you literally just go and get in an elevator and go, you know, take the long way, you'll never have a loading point. But if you're loading it, dude, it can take a minute. I really timed it, right? I timed it. I sent you the thing. I was like, it's like 55 seconds is the load from from when I leave to the other. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this feels like forever. Which in a game where everything's hap- you know, the happening and, and you got your adrenaline like uh, up. It is. It makes you feel like, you know, like an yeah, eternity. Yeah, you can definitely feel that. You can definitely feel that. Yeah. It, are they going to fix it? I don't know. I don't care, to be honest with you. It it, it didn't ruin the experience for me, but it is a, it is a blemish uh, on the game, and that's that's really my only complaint about it. Um, I take it, too. The characters are just so weird, too. It's so good, guys. Seriously. I cannot I cannot express how everybody sh- needs to play this game. Not, not the best facial animations I've seen, though. The best, best one? The the facial animations, everybody had a, like a waxy it's kind not, of like creepy look. Uh, yeah, but you can was... almost you can almost look at and go, was that on purpose? You know, was that yeah, was that was that I was agree. that a, a, a yeah. an element to the game they were trying to do? And you don't know, maybe it it's just what they want. it doesn't feel out. You know, yeah, it's definitely it's too cool, guys. Also, it's too cool. uh, load times not an issue on PC. Good for you. I finished it. <laughs> what? <PlayStation 4. laughs> he oh said, "Oh my god, <laughs> so, not on issue of PC." I'm just saying. <laughs> that, those shit loaded in three. Let me put it this way: you know how it gives you titles uh, or tip, uh, tool tips? I never get a chance to read them, and oh. I don't know if that's good or bad. I've read them all, my friend. <laughs> read you them know them by memory multiple times. <laughs> 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 uh, but still, guys, it's it does bring to question like, that we were bringing up in in one of the prior podcasts. You know, is it something that they just for, they're not forgetting about the older console? Uh, is it just something that's no longer on their mind? You know, are they really trying to focus forward? But again, the game's not broken. That much I can say. It never crashed. It just it you know it looks great. It doesn't have ray tracing, sure, but it still looks fucking amazing. You know what I mean? So um, I definitely. I really can't speak anymore. I'm just shocked at the game because I wasn't sure. It wasn't even on my radar. You know, oh. it's just like, ah, I see, keep seeing the previews. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there's people floating and she's she's able to tele- telekinetically pick up rocks and f- throw it at people. But let me tell you, it is like he, like uh, uh, Dream Twist was mentioning, extremely satisfying to i have some gameplay that i have uh recorded which i'm going to post it is so cool to get into an area with a group of people and you're shooting this guy over here you dive to to you know you run and dive to behind this cover someone's coming around the corner you grab a a, a anything i mean i've grabbed like these huge table or a couch right over here and just like levitate and toss it at that person and that person gets knocked the fuck out and then i run and start shooting some more people and then i get surrounded and i just put my hands up and, and let the rocks like the the floor itself breaks apart and becomes like a, a barrier to protect me oh my god dude it's <laughs> so fucking cool um anyway i'm not gonna talk about it anymore uh-huh. just 
fucking get the game. It's worth it. It's especially if you like sci-fi, man. If you're into anything sci-fi, that that weird shit where you go, man, astral plane and 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 you know the objects of power and all that stuff. It's just, if if all that fucking shit uh, gets, I love fucking shit like that. So well, again, objects of power, and I, I and I'm 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 hoping that I could get uh, the story and that it wraps up, you know, well intentioned and well together because. Let me tell you right now, and it's not that I was not enjoying it. It was, it was that it just felt like a, a little this. Um, I shouldn't say disjointed because at the core, at the core of it, what you have to do seems seems very basic. Uh, up to the part where I'm at, of course, which I want to say is close is close to the end. But uh, the stuff on the very free and the things with the objects of power and uh, fucking fighting a pink flamenco for some reason oh, <laughs> you. yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah it's it's not really how it sounds but yeah yeah it's not how it there sounds, is a, but there's a flamingo it involved um, yeah. <laughs> um it is oh man guys it's such a i think personally with the story the way it is and the world the way it, the, the the bureau or the holders house the way it's built out it just makes sense you know just you would realize if these things happen in real life of course there would be a bureau <laughs> that has to do this you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. so it just makes sense and um it's i think personally it's just really really well thought out it, um, it, by, by the way just to clarify to, to clarify I, I didn't spoil anything major when I, when, I, when I mentioned the flamingo it, it's really nothing special <laughs> it isn't and truthfully yeah. you can probably miss it if you don't you even go cuz that's their that's side true. stuff that you could just bypass altogether yeah yeah <laughs> so anyway beat that love it still playing it but i did start something new Oh. I started playing Link's Awakening on the Switch. Oh, snap. So okay. you finally dusted off your, your Switch. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did have to dust it All off. All right. Uh, Link's Awakening, guys, Dark. is a remake of the Game Boy title from way back in the day. Uh, this game is... <sighs> How should I say this? <laughs> It is a beautiful game. It is an exceptionally beautiful game. It looks like a live Toy Story. You know, what I mean? it's just that really, really uh, welled out. Uh, well, um, visually, it looks it just looks amazing the way they've they've redid the whole the whole area. Mm. However, this is classic Zelda. You know what I mean? This yeah. is that Link to the Past game. That's awesome. You know That's I mean? perfect. It is. But you have to remember, it's also the Link to the Past game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the sense that... My favorite you know, Zelda of them all. True. But when was the last time you played that favorite Zelda? Uh, <laughs> I tried playing it like a couple of five years ago, probably, on wow. an emulator. And how did that go? Pretty well, actually. Like I said, there there's some games that, to me, they, they stand the test of time. Super Metroid is one of them. You know, I don't care what people say. That that game is amazing. A Mario game you can pick up. You can pick up Mario Three and play it to completion, and it's still amazing. And A Link to the Past. It's also one of those games that are you know that are great. Now, would I play? Having beaten it, would I dedicate time to play it again to completion? No. But would I play a game like that? Hell yeah. Like I, I want to play this game. So, I, for for the record, I want to make sure I, I get out there. I am enjoying my time with it, but it's it is a remake in 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 every sense of the word. I mean, the game itself is the same game. The only thing yeah. that really differs is the gorgeous visuals, which are really really. Good. I can't express how how awesome they look. It's just the design choice they went with is something extraordinary. Um, which I mean, very. I mean, this is if you really think about it, this is the same leap that we're about to experience with Final Fantasy Remake. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like it went from that from that PlayStation One to what we're about to get now. It's that crazy of a wow! This should look wait. good. Yes. So the Game Boy, because Game Boy version is very very simplistic um, yeah. to what it is, to what this is is an absolute jump, just like that. Um, but dude. <laughs> Some, some of the missions, it's just like, what the hell do I need to do? <laughs> you know, uh-huh. because because I know Link to the Past. I can probably play. I've played Link to the Past many a times, uh, and more recently, it was probably on my Wii, and it's about the same time. I can. I remember where I need to. I remember the mission structures, and I want because I know how to do it because I've done it before. But I've never played Link's Awakening, so this is completely new to me. 
And it is very different from other Zelda games. It's weird because we're seeing Mario characters in a Zelda game. There is a Yoshi. There is a a, a, a Bomb Mom. There is a, 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 what do you call it, a, a Goomba. You know a, what I mean? A, a uh, piranha chain. plants. A chain, ch- a chomp chain. Chain chomper, uh, yeah. yeah. Chain what? chomper. You know? Why? Yeah, chain... Why are they there? They were there. They were always there. They were just, for some strange reason, that was just something that they included into the Link, Link Awakening original game. It's actually um, confirmation that the Mushroom Kingdom is a section of Hyrule. Of Hyrule. Well, not true, because we're not in Hyrule. This is not. This doesn't. This oh. is one of the few, few games that does not actually take place in Hyrule. He was. Let me guess. It takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom then. It must because that's what, <laughs> if you look at all the enemies. But uh-huh. it's also there's also some enemies that you'll be familiar with from like uh, Link to the Past, right. uh, which is those those pig looking ogre things with it throws spears at you and stuff like that. Uh, Shit that you're used to seeing in Zelda as well. So it's a, it's it's an interesting mix. But it's like I said, it's one of those things where man, you're just wandering trying to figure things out. Just I guess let me talk to everybody. Let yeah. me talk to everybody again. Let me you know what I mean? It's just. You're like, man, we've come a long way from from those old school type uh, fantasy games. I still like it, though. I still really enjoy it. If I can have a nitpick, and honestly, I don't know if I would have seen it had I not seen it beforehand, but I think I would have seen it. For some strange reason, we all know that uh, Nintendo's very big on, you know, making making their games great, running great, and uh, 60 frames per second and everything. This one... I don't know if it's the limitation of the system, it probably is, or if it's the design choice they went with, but it has occasional drops in frame rate, which, again, I don't know if I would have, I, I think I would have noticed, because it's, it's, it's a significant drop, <laughs> like it happens <laughs> like abruptly, and then it clears out quickly. So that much I can say, which is probably the only reason they, they released it like that, like, well, it, it's not something that lasts but it's there for a second or two where you're like, whoa, this is different. And it's not dropping to like, you know, single digits or anything like that, but it's it's like it's at 60 and it drops to like 30. <laughs> you know no, I mean? literally. And it that, drops. That's literally what it does. That's what it does, yeah. Yeah, so it yeah, drops, because... yeah. And it's usually when it's transitioning from one plane to another or if you're if you're if there's a lot of things happening at once. It's just odd. It's it's interesting to see, but like I said, it's not game breaking. Um, it, it, and it's not to the point where it's it's you know it's not to the point where it, it's ruining the, the, my experience or anything like that. But uh, it is very cool. I'm, I'm I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So, uh, anybody have any interest in Lake's Awakening? I I want to I I want to try it. Like I said, the uh, I've been I've been I've been looking for. You remember that time that I used to tell you that I told you that I wanted to play 3D Dot Heroes? Yeah. It's because three dot heroes reminded me of Zelda, uh, you know, a link to the past. Of course, in a very exaggerated, you know, method, and and that game should get a remake. My God, that game! But the the I, I do I love the the look of it, you know. Uh, I I like the the fact that they were even in the, in the you see scrolling and, and and all that in a way that you don't see it on the actual you know on the actual game. Because the actual game was a Game Boy game, the locations, the everything's located in the. They, they took time to put everything exactly where it was on the original game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for those of you that remember, you know the game, playing it now, there's got to be something special about it. You know, there's got to feel, there's got to feel like a cool nostalgia trick. Oh, that, uh, or, or maybe this is the way you remembered it, or something. I don't know. Uh, but I never played it, so I'm excited to try this out. I'm probably going to need a subscription to Nintendo Power again, right? To be able to find out the, the, the secrets. That's probably <laughs> what you need. I, I, I doubt it. I think it can just YouTube it at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll YouTube it. Sorry. I guess, yeah. No, I, I, I never played the original one, and I'm not sure I'm going to jump into this one. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you, sir. I don't blame you. like me. Zelda? <sighs> There you go. Well, that, 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 that's that's no, no. Okay, it's, how can I say this? Because honestly, I haven't played a whole lot of Zelda. Although I did play the original one uh, when it was remade for the Game Boy SP, <clears throat> and I did finish it. I, I believe oh. I finished it. I don't Wait, know. the original Legend of Zelda? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. And because the, the first one I played was Ocarina of Time, which I absolutely love. And then I played Majora's Mask, which at the time I'm pretty sure I didn't appreciate it enough, so I never, I didn't fin, I didn't like it at the time, so I didn't finish it. 
Wind Waker, I didn't care for. Uh, Ooh, what? I loved Wind Waker, bro. <laughs> I loved Wind Waker. I didn't think I was going to care for it. And I think I got it maybe on some ridiculous sale. And yeah, man, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Well, Did I mean, they remade I had a... that game? They, re- they remade uh, Link's, Awa- Link's Awakening, right? Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. You're talking about uh, Wind Waker? Wind Waker, sorry, 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 yeah. They did, um, yeah. yeah. It was a it was a remaster is really what it was. Did you is that the one that you say you played or No, I played the original. Oh you know. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I, I had a friend, one of my best friends, he he was raving about it, but I didn't have a GameCube either, so Actually and... I played it on the Wii. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I can I was able to put that on the Wii. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did borrow somebody's I don't know. I don't know. Was it, uh, the Twilight Princess was on GameCube, right? Twilight Princess it was, was actually on... both, yeah. Yeah, both, GameCube yeah. And Wii, yeah. <laughs> the best version was actually on GameCube. Yeah, I think I think I borrowed somebody's GameCube to play this, and I really liked it. I yeah. don't think I finished it, because I didn't have it for enough time, but I did like it. So I can't say that I'm a diehard fan of Zelda in any capacity. You know, like, my love is for Ocarina of Time mainly because of what the game meant to me at the time. I mean, and still does you know mm-hmm. yeah but that's about as far as i go so no that's one of the reasons i won't get into like honestly the only thing i really want on on the switch is the pokemon game oh the poke oh, okay i got you but yeah that uh that's all i've uh been playing and real quick i'm just going to mention a quick movie that i saw and i don't know why i wasted my time uh <laughs> was a movie called dune uh which if anybody oh, wow. knows is a 80 sci-fi cult yeah. classic, I guess we can say. Maybe not classic, more of a cult classic. I think there's people out there that enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I watched it, and God <laughs> help us. <laughs> you know, it was, oh my God, just the most ridiculous sci-fi thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's, honestly, it's, it's weird because it's not, I don't know if it's bad or if it's just not well put time. together. Not well put together. Maybe it's not of its time. In essence, the story I mean, not is... Not of our time. Definitely of its time, but not of our time. That's the, what I mean. Well, no. What I'm trying to say is maybe it was ahead of its time. You know, maybe oh. that type of movie would have been... And it would have been perfect now. With, well, they're, they're planning to, to do a remake, uh, oh. which is why I was interested in, in watching it, because I'm like, I've never seen the original. And, and this is like, 80, no, it's like 1984 sci-fi, and I'm like, yeah. all right, let's check this out. It is... Wow. <laughs> I think the uh, the highlight of the film uh, has to be <laughs> they develop this gun that shoots by them yelling. <laughs> they uh, go, uh, ha! And it just shoots out. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck am I That watching? sounds like a Borderlands gun to me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's because, well, is it Borderlands 2 had a gun like that. You shot it, it started screaming. And I think it was like the, one of the strongest weapons in the game, too, but it was horrible to use. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Maybe that's where they drew their... They got it from, yeah. Maybe. Uh, another highlight I would have to say is the actress, Sean Young, uh, which uh, she's lovely. She's sci-fi 80s gold, guys. So yeah. it's good to see her again. But that was about the that was about it, guys. <laughs> that yeah. was about it. it was two, in, two hours and some change that I will never get back. Uh, but uh, does not really leave me excited to see the remake because I don't know what Aww. they're going to do. <laughs> but we shall see. We shall see. It is time, guys. For our trailer of the week. Trailer of the week. And that's trailer it. Trailer of the week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Chaos. Uh, our trailer of breaking tradition, as we've been doing in this particular Early. episode of one, uh, 179, the real 179. Uh, we have, I guess we can call it a three way tie, but we'll just say three movies that we really, because, I mean, after we saw them all, I think we can all agree and saying this is not an easy choice. These nope. all look nope. uh, fairly good. Yeah. Uh, let's get the, the, the immediate one off the back. Uh, it, we did sh- see the most recent. It is called Trailer 1, but that's because we had actually already seen the teaser for it. Uh, of the Irishman coming to Netflix and also coming to limited 
release in the theaters. Uh, this one is a Martin Scorsese film starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci. I mean... I get goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. That sounds ridiculous. It does sound ridiculous. It sounds insane. And it is even more insane that it is a Netflix film. So guess what? When it comes out, oh, yes. I'm just going to be able to freaking watch it. You know what yeah. I mean? Do you, do you think this will be, uh, what was it, Bird Watch? Whatever was that movie with Sandra Bullock with the bird? Bird Watch. Oh. Uh, bird Box. Bird Box. Bird Box. Why? Yeah. Do you think it'll beat it? Yeah, cause wasn't that like the biggest movie to come out of Netflix at the time? Everybody watched it like in three it days did. or whatever. Yeah, it was. It was definitely. I want to say they said something like forty million people tuned in, yeah. or at least watched it once or something like that. Uh, and Bird Box was okay. It wasn't. It was. <laughs> it was a decent film. It wasn't uh, amazing. But Sandra Bullock obviously uh, is a great actress, so she 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 pretty much carried the film. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I would like to think it is. I mean, this is, uh, again, I mean, look at the names. Oh. We were just talking about how Joe Pesci came out of retirement for this. You know what I mean? He's like, I know yeah, that. I'm done acting. And then Martin Scorsese, hey, by the way, I have a film. Okay, I'm going to come back yeah. just for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. Just because it's you. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Wait, uh, you're getting, uh, you're saying you get Robert De Niro? And you're getting Al Pacino? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back for this. You imagine yeah. that conversation? Like, you imagine he would have said no at first? Like, nah, man, I'm done. Like, I really don't want to. Like, listen, this we got Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Isn't always that trio? I feel like there'll be movies <laughs> with that trio. The trio? Uh, no. Oh. The the first time it's funny because these two actors are so big. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. The first time they ever shared a screen together was in the movie Heat. Oh God, such oh, an amazing yeah. movie! Such a fucking good movie, right? Yeah, such an amazing movie. And that movie itself had this build up to the meeting between the two characters because it was like they've never shared a film and they've never shared you know any screen time together, and here they are. And that's a great, great film. Uh, since then, they've I think they've crossed paths here and there, but it's it's still seldom. And then with um, Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro were in Goodfellas. Oh, okay, th- that's what I'm thinking, probably. Yeah, they yeah. were also in Casino. Yeah, yeah, Casino. That's a great movie too. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, really look at it. Those are the cross paths that they did. Um, it's funny. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro were in the same film back in uh, Godfather the Part Two. But they never shared any screen time because uh, they were playing two different roles of two different eras. So they never actually were on the same screen at the same time. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. he uh, Robert De Niro was playing the full-grown grandson of Don Corleone, which you see him as an older guy. He was played by uh, Marlon Brando. But then in this particular movie, they jump back into the past and Robert De Niro plays a young him. So they're never in the same place twice because... Neither of them ever existed yeah. at the same time. So, right. Um, anyway, they cut the t- <laughs> yeah. uh, from the say it again. No, I was gonna say they cut the time traveler, the yeah, time yeah. traveling section. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a little too far fetched for a mafia film. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that was that was the quick little timeline of, of movies they share. But yes, to see them all together, and now the three of them together, I don't think have ever been in any movie together. Uh, and so to see them all together and now being, you know, uh, directed by Martin Scorsese is like, pfft, yes, yeah. in uh, immediate win. So much. The next movie uh, was an interesting one, which we didn't see coming. Uh, we heard about it. I think uh, Dream and I were looking for trailers of it because we started seeing early reviews saying it's an amazing film and all this stuff. The film isn't even out yet. <laughs> you know, it comes out in December. Where are these reviews coming from? Why can't we find a trailer on it? And then here we are a couple of weeks later. Uncut Gems uh, starring Adam Sandler uh, in a clearly not his usual role. <laughs> you know, this is not, at this all. Is not a, a happy Gilmore joint. Um, this is obviously him in a much. No, uh, fortunately, the... this, is, this is his number 23. <laughs> uh, except that Matt Dog hated the number 23 so don't even get started with that, I, like that I, I see the comparison though I see what you mean Yeah, uh, he has actually done other uh, Adam Sandler has done other dramatic films one of which is probably one of my favorite of his it's called Spanglish um, I definitely can recommend that one uh, for you guys everybody should watch that's a very good film uh, another one was Punch Drunk Love both of 
both of these films have really high ratings, and they're not his wacky comedies that he that yeah. he does. The um, other one was Fifty First Day. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it wait no that's not from there that's from uh might as well be he's on all his movies he is on all his <laughs> movies they're not in here like i said this this is not a happy happy gilman joint so you didn't see any of them in this particular film what do you guys think of that trailer uncut gems so this is definitely not don't nobody messes with the sohan no <laughs> whatever the hell was that thing that i saw that was like god awful because let me tell you after <laughs> after that movie i have i had I was ready to completely write him off. Like, nope, this just Adam Sandler movies are just way too stupid. And this is for someone that can actually enjoy stupid movies every now and then. But no, I was like, no, I'm done. And then uh, I started seeing, I actually started seeing the reviews on uh, on, on this on this movie, and and I'm like, when is this coming out? It's just like you said, it's not coming out for like months, you know, you know. So, but. It it was interesting because everybody was speaking very highly of it. You know, it was definitely getting uh, uh, some good some good vibe. And, and now we see the trailer, and I'm like, oh, okay, I I totally get it. I don't know what the trailer is about exactly. I'm still a little confused, but it definitely looks intriguing, very interesting. He he, he is a, he's playing a character that at least I haven't seen. You know, uh, there's a completely different element to me, and that's why this was. My particular pick of uh, for the trailer of the week before we decided to make it a a triumphant <laughs> a three way tie a triumphant a yeah a threesome tie. a threesome oh god a trifecta if you will yeah the unholy trinity Cax, what you think of uh, uncut gems? I you know it interests me more than I was expecting as soon as I knew it was Adam Sandler. <laughs> You're like, oh man, what am I? I because I had Come written on. him off. Like I haven't watched anything after. What was it? Don't mess with the Sohan. Was that him? Oh yeah, god, that was him. Yeah, that was, I did yeah. watch that movie. Me too. Why? Wait, you I also saw, saw it? it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh my god. Don't ask me. I don't know why I saw it, but it happened. You lost a bed or something? No, I don't I know don't... why I watched it, but it was. I don't know. Anyways, I I haven't watched anything of him uh, after that. I think I watched Grown Ups. But it wasn't because of him. It was because Hama Hayek is in that movie. Okay. Well, maybe that has something to do with Zohan, because there's a very lovely uh, Middle Eastern woman in that movie. Yeah, but there's no Hama Hayek in that movie. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, again, I don't know why I watched that movie, but it happened. <laughs> so, again, this movie looks very interesting. Um, Like, Dream, like, Peacock over here mentioned. I'm not exactly Peacock. certain of the plot of the movie. At first, I thought it was just about making bets and whatnot, and him either losing or, you know, taking the money somewhere along something along those lines. But then it's like it's called Uncut Gems, and I have no idea what's happening here. But looks it still like looks he... pretty interesting. It's 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 really outside of what I've you you know out of the realm of what I've always seen him in I have not seen him in any serious movies before mm -hmm. so well, I can say that I'm looking forward to it yeah Good it idea. was not my pick though I, I picked Martin Scorsese because Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese yeah uh yeah it does look out of the ordinary uh for him and he also yeah I'm glad it didn't show too much uh from the trailer because you know sometimes you don't want to give everything it. away yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, my pick was El Camino, which is a Breaking Bad movie or film. I'm not sure of how it said it in the uh, trailer. Um, this is mostly for its potential. I'm a huge, huge fan of Breaking Bad, one of the best TV series. Uh, I agree. This, unfortunately, not unfortunately, this takes place literally minutes after the series ended. So if you know how the series ended, I won't spoil anything here, but if you know how the series ended, you know where it left off, that's where this picks up. So it's as if it's not missing a beat from the from the show itself. Um, and if you know where it left off, then you're like, well, is this going to be Breaking Bad? <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't really know where it's going. I'm still interested in it because everyone involved with the production of the show is, in, is involved with the film as well. So that at least lends some hope that it's like, okay, obviously this is not just given off to somebody that, hey, I need you to make something Breaking Bad-ish. You know what I mean? In, in this case, it's being uh, made by the same people. Imagine. 
Could you imagine if he had the uh, the director uh oh, what's his name? Ryan something? No. Um the one that directed the, ep the my our favorite episode and also uh The Last Jedi? Um yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Johnston. Ryan Johnston, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ryan is Johnson. he involved in any way? Um I don't think so. Maybe he is in some sort of producer role, um, but I don't think so. I can look it up, yeah. I guess. Yeah, he, he 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 gets credit for uh Several episodes, best, yeah, yeah, uh, and some of the best ones actually. Mm -hmm. You know, I really freaking love the particular one I'm thinking about. Yeah, Ozzy Mandis is the, is yes. the name of the episode, yeah, which is probably I think if you look it up in, um, like I think on IGN it has it as a ten. The episode is a ten. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh abso yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. probably one of the best things I've seen on TV. And it's and, one of those. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, I was gonna say it's one of those things where. You can't just watch episode 10. You know what I mean? No. It's the best episode ever, but you need to have the history in order for it to make yeah. sense as being the best episode ever. Yeah. Um, but I uh, hear a lot of people that I have recommended Breaking Bad. They have started. They always started with the first couple episodes. They're like, ah, oh, no, it just feels too slow. And, and and it's totally not that. It's like one of those uh, series that you, you have to give it its try you know mm -hmm. it, I, I will say you know if, if you watch a season and then you say oh that's not you know i'm not feeling it then uh hey you're probably crazy no but <laughs> I, I respect you uh, <laughs> uh no it, it, it then i will say well okay so it's 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 not gonna be for you i understand but judging it from the first episode which is still a very good episode to, you know it is. When, when i think about it you know it sets things perfectly you know uh and you just don't think that from that humble beginning, it's going to turn into this, like, well, like you said, it's one of the best things that have that been on TV, you know, yep. up to this day with all the series that have come out lately. Mm -hmm. I will still recommend, you know, over anything uh, Breaking Bad. Absolutely. Absolutely. Vince Gilligan is the writer and director uh, and creator of the, the uh, show, and he uh -huh. is directly involved. There is no Ryan Johnston. Uh, he's not producing or anything like that but it's okay uh so aaron paul who plays jesse he's back and he's gonna it's basically picking off picking up with him uh so very interested in it. and so those are our trailers of the week uh guys let's move on into our useless news that you guys can use yeah uh and i'm gonna start with playstation had a state of play earlier this week on tuesday Yes, I've been oh, waiting for this. Yeah, so we have some news items. Let's let's get the big one out of the way. Last of Us Part Two, yeah. uh, release date February twenty first, twenty twenty, and they showed off a trailer, a little bit of a story trailer. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. <laughs> um, yeah. First off, it looks amazing, and I think we can all agree. Yeah, I think we can also all agree that maybe a little too much info came out on this trailer. <laughs> maybe a little too much. I mean, this stupid trailer pretty much gives all uh, what what almost like the, the some poignant uh, points of, of the game that I would have loved to experience uh, without the stupid trailer ruining it. It gets ruined in this trailer. Guys, if you're, you have any interest on, on playing The Last of Us, do not watch this trailer. Do, you already seen enough. We already said it. We, I think we were on the last podcast, we were saying it. Nope, we've seen enough already. We've seen enough. We're ready to play the game. I believe the question is, you, you asked me about it, and I was like, no, I don't need to see any more. But, of course, you know, we needed to see it for this one. And, boy, am I mad that I did because... <laughs> <laughs> Stupid thing spoils. It's just, it's just a, it's a bad trailer. I mean, don't get me wrong. The game is amazing and it gets you hyped up. But this is the stuff that we blame Disney uh, when they, when they have tra uh, trailers for, you know, when they have, had the trailer for the hero movies, and we're like, oh man, but you're giving away too much. Well, yeah, this is, this is that on the scale to ten. So. <laughs> Mr. Chaos, <laughs> you saw the trailer. What are your thoughts? I, I don't think the spoilers rank up so much up to 10. We probably could have just seen early things. that I agree. I agree that it shouldn't have been spoiled. Um, But I feel like if it is what you're referring to... Oh, well, don't um, 
uh, it might be just early parts of the game, though. Like, it doesn't matter. Are... I don't. Uh, as far as a point, whether it's at the beginning or the end or the reveal, it's a cool part. I didn't need to see it. Yeah. I would argue. Did we see it? It didn't get me excited. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean we, if you don't know, know what happened, you remember. Happened. You remember, <laughs> you remember the Red Wedding almost getting spoiled by a, an HBO uh, trailer and being very upset about it. I do. Yeah. I do. You could tell by what happened the, on the trailer the, what was yeah. going to happen in the. No, no, no. It was happening, and yeah. it already it already got out. The difference there is that the for the record, guys, this is the Red Wedding that we're talking about, yeah. uh, and I had never seen uh, Game of Thrones, and I was prepping to see it, and there was this commercial that came out. It was where were you when the Red Wedding happened? And then you see people just freaking out, and then it's showing images, and I'm going, okay, clearly something happens bad at this Red yeah. Wedding, but. It already happened, so people already had reactions, and and it was delivered in a certain way. Here, if there's one, th- I'm not I'm not clearing them of the of of this. I'm not going to say they didn't make a bad choice here. Um, I just think it, in a in a rule of a lot of film and a lot of movies, if you don't see a body, chances are what you think happens not actually happening. So. We don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I agree. It still leads to believe something happened because obviously something is happening. Um, and obviously, you know, it's leading to believe what we think is happening is what occurred. But we don't know until we see it. And I get it. I get it. But at the same time, technically, we didn't see what occurred. And so it's still a little mystery. However, Listen, it still showed a little more than we probably need. You don't to know by her reaction what happened. Where, where everything was, and I don't know. I don't know what. Well, that is. even if it's a strong assumption, it's just an assumption. Okay. True. The truth of the matter is that to me, it got me excited for the game. So. I am excited for the game too. I haven't lost excitement. I am on the on the on the fence of man. Maybe I did need to see it, but again, it could just be misdirection because. I just I can't see them like that's re- like if anybody has played I assume people who played the first one if you played the first one imagine running into the scene at the very beginning in a trailer and how that would have removed that away I just don't see them making that mistake purposefully maybe they you're, made it accidentally you're possibly. talking about you're talking about Naughty Dog I am talking about Naughty Dog yeah well I'm referring to Sony. Because the marketing is this marketing is it it's it's pretty much Sony on this one, and I do believe they're not ruining uh, 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 scenes like they have done for you know some of the movies also. The yes, uh, I'm well, not the, giving them because any, yeah. the movies. I think see, I, I think I, I think it differs there because I think Naughty Dog has earned a certain. Uh, amount of respect within Sony, where it's like, guys, you handle what you need to handle. As a matter of fact, they weren't ready to show the game, uh, Sony, and Naughty Dog was the one who first said, yeah, we just wanted to show a piece of the game. And then they disappeared for like a year and a half, two years. That was Naughty Dog saying, no, we wanted to do that. We wanted to get get that, even though we knew it was going to be a while before you're going to see anything else. So I don't know that. That's an assumption to me. Because I don't and know that for a fact. I I don't know that for a fact either. I'm just going by you know was what, what is his name Druckmann Druckmann's like interview. You know what I mean? Saying that that's what that was the deal. So maybe he's just full of shit too. Who knows? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, it could be possible. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but I'm ex- I'm still excited. I'm still excited. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, real quick because that was the major part of it. So uh, of well, not the major, but the most biggest part of the. Um, Three versions of, uh, or, or they, they got, of course, they got the collector's edition. They got the super mega expensive one. They got the standard with the, with the steel book. And then they got the regular, not counting the, the digital. Uh, which, one you, which one are you doing, uh, my dog? I'm doing the digital because if you do the other one, it's on two discs. And I'm not going. It to... is. Yeah, it is on two discs. Yeah. That's how big the of... game is, guys, for the record. It's yeah. on two discs. Two Blu-rays. Yeah, I was thinking of that too, but man, I'm a sucker for Steelbook. <laughs> so, so uh, and also, uh, I, I don't know what's happening with Best Buy. Maybe they're ending their their uh, gamers club or whatever. But they gave me a 25 percent discount thing, uh, a code to use. Maybe because they're ending that, maybe or whatever. So I just put it there, and and, and I got a nice discount out of it. 
uh, on on pre order. So there you I'm, go. I'm doing the I'm, I'm doing the the steel book on that one. Well, I mean, I mean, when you get a discount, then you might as well. What about you, uh, Kox? I honestly, I would like the steel book. It just sounds like a pretty nice collectible, but. Oh, I didn't ask you because I, I thought that you were automatically going to answer the, the 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 one with the statue. Wow, what was your thing? Yeah, but I'm not like a giant fan of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difference. Come on, man. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Like like that that kind you, of thing. What do you gotta hate like, that was? Do you hate that? Uh, <laughs> I'm just fucking. I just fucking with like, you. for example, like, I did pre-order the <laughs> what was it the Batmobile edition for Batman Arkham Knight. Oh yeah. The one that got canceled. <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. Wow. God. So, That's okay. Yeah, that, it, it was not a great game either. So. No. Well, it's not even that. Apparently, the 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 reason it got canceled because the car was actual shit. Oh, okay. It wasn't good. Like it was really bad quality. So <laughs> I'm glad that because I always I would have raged endlessly over that. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I'm, I might get the steel book. But if I get the steel book. I will just probably get it on digital as well. Literally uh, just to have the collectible. Just to have the collectible. Okay. The, the collectible? The steelbook. The steelbook. Oh, the steelbook. Oh, so you double deep? What, uh, what, what do you say? The, you like, I'd see? be willing to double dip for it, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Wow. Nice. All right. Uh, so moving on. De- they showed off a limited edition PlayStation 4 Pro bundle. For Death Stranding, which is available August eighth. Uh, oh no, I think this the reverse is uh, November eighth. Oh, I was going to say August eighth, so it's like, been available hell? since yeah. then. You we know, missed it. Yeah. So weird. Uh, not a very cool edition. It's just basically a white PS Pro with the basically handprints on it. It's very, you know, kindergarten like. Kind of and then the controller is a see-through yellow controller, which is supposed to mimic the little capsule that the Weird little babies in, so uh-huh. yeah, not getting that. Uh, moving on, uh, medieval game demo is available now on PlayStation Store, uh, so you can play the game before it comes out. It comes out on October sixth, uh, and of course, if you got the demo, it actually there's something that will carry over to the main game once it comes out. Uh, Arise, which is a Zelda-like game that stars. This character looks a little bit like like uh, Santa Claus, but it looked pretty cool. Very Viking-like. PlayStation Plus Games for October was revealed at the show. And the first one is going to be MLB The Show 19, which is a exclusive uh, baseball game to PlayStation consoles. And it's Oh, uh, that's cool. I love baseball. Yeah. I do, too. And I've honestly... I, I might, might ju- yeah, I might, I might just this download one. this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I never wanted I to buy it. Not going anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's good. a no from uh, from our dear chaos. I'm surprised that 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 is the only genre I don't deep into. Sports games. Yeah, I mean yeah. sport games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically yes. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. I, I got I I I I agree. I don't do sports games either. Uh, I only like the baseballs, and I'm sure that I'm not gonna be into like stats and shit. I probably play a couple of times to be like, okay, these graphics are nice. Let me show them to my dad, and then okay, let's move on. And and if I had the opportunity to make the computer play the, itself, then I could be neat for like an hour, and then that's it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, The Last of Us Remastered will be available on PlayStation Plus. So those are the two games coming to PlayStation Plus in October. See, this is the time to play The Last of Us. <laughs> it sure is. It seems so. Awesome. Yeah. Fitting, isn't it? <laughs> right? Go we'll figure. Coincidence? Yeah. I think not. I think not, indeed. Uh, and then they showed off a lot of PS uh, VR titles, one of which is L.A. Noir, the VR Case Files. Uh, Stardust Odyssey, After the Fall, Space Channel 5, because dancing in VR has to be good for your stomach. Uh, And so the next thing they showed off was a game called Humanity, which was extremely odd. But it's from the makers of Tetris Effect and Res, so it's kind of interesting to see. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep it, you know, in the back part of the radar, but still out there somewhere. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 
the newest game, the newest Call of Duty Modern Warfare, showed off a trailer for its uh, story. And this one looks to be, I mean, from the trailer, it looks to be the most story I've ever seen in a Call of Duty. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but this trailer looked very film-like. This could have been an action film we were watching. And I'm like, this looks, man, if this was a movie, I'd, I'd be down to watch it. So, yeah, you guys check it out. We'll post it on the um, on the group. After Party, which is a game I've been waiting for from the makers of Oxenfree, uh, where you basically have to challenge the devil to out-drink him so you can get out of hell. So that's actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, a crazy cool. game from the makers of... Uh, what's, that, what's that game with the little alien creature that rolls things up into stars? Oh, uh, Katamari Damachi. Katamari Damachi, thank you. Yeah. From the makers of Katamari Damachi comes an even odder game called Watam. Uh, and then, finally, Civilization VI. Wow, Believe I was surprised not, by that one. Coming to PlayStation 4. Let's hope that that shit runs. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Each turn is going to take like 45 you know, or uh, 45 seconds to a minute. Yeah. You know, between them. Well, uh, actually, I, I, I was surprised uh, that that game, uh, not that the game was ported. Well, let me put it this way there was a version of Civilization ported to consoles, and it was a very good version, but it was very console centric. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 and, and it, and it was, uh, there was a streamline, let's say, mm-hmm. uh, for console play. And it was good. It was actually really, really not bad. Uh, this seems to be the Civilization 6 experience from what I've heard. Otherwise, I feel like they would have called it something else. But uh, if it's the Civilization 6 experience, uh, it'll be interesting to, to watch because that is a good game. That is a really good game, actually. You know, yeah. Uh, so, and, and we don't have that many uh, turn-based strategy games on console. On console, no, very, yeah. very little. Yeah, very yeah, little. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's because it's just the the nature of trying to control mm-hmm. a. Uh, I mean, this is a game, for instance, where I'm like a keyboard and mouse makes sense here. You know what I mean? But who knows? Yeah, it'll yeah. be interesting to see what they do. Uh, yeah. With, yeah, I mean, it, technically, you can you can. There are keyboards and mouse, um, mice that you can put to to a, uh, to, a PlayStation, to PlayStation console, so it's not oh, like yeah. it's impossible. But oh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see that. So, yeah. so, uh, in, in, uh, well, do you have any more uh, announcements for? No, nope, that's uh, all of them campaign? for Game Pass. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was a good uh, uh, game. Game Pass. Uh, say to play. Actually, it was it, it was media enough. It has some new information. So we, we were talking about Collector's Edition, mm-hmm. and there was a story that came out originally that the Collector's Edition's power armor helmet uh, of Fallout 76 was re- being recalled, around 20,000 of them, for mold exposure. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, but that story has since been corrected. <laughs> so that was a, that was a lie? It was only ten thousand. No, no, no. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, it, it it was it was not entirely accurate, actually. Okay. Uh, they, it was not because we all thought, or uh, the the gaming press thought that it was the helmets that came in with the Final Seventy Six Collector's Edition, like the high end, you know, the one that's supposed to have the that 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 tote bag, that vinyl tote bag. Oh, okay. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. The I, I was like, back that never happened. That never, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it ended up happening just like six months late, and what it, you have to go through a ridiculous <laughs> recall process. Anyway, this helmet is not that. Uh, this helmet is actually instead uh, from a different line of co- collectibles sold through GameStop. Mm. Uh, so here's the, here's the Bethesda statement on that matter. They say. Uh, the helmets that are being recalled are not from the Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition, but are instead a different line of helmets sold exclusively by GameStop. The Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition helmets are unaffected. Uh, consumers sh- should visit the product recall page for instructions if they have purchased the GameStop helmet. Uh, and then it says uh, 32 units out of 20,000 units manufactured were sold to, cons- to consumers. 
and uh, uh, first, well, first of all, I thought I heard that they were issuing refunds, and I was like, "Oh man, this is your chance! If you bought that shitty game, this is your chance to <laughs> this get this is the way back. to get back." Yeah. Yes, yes, it's like finally some uh, some justice. But no, it turns out if you bought this separate thing, the separate helmet uh that that came out from another because i didn't think those help you could wear the 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 power armor helmets from the collector's edition Mm. you know i didn't think you could wear them i could be wrong anyway uh so anyway concerns were raised that the wearable Fallout 76 helmet is a breeding ground for mold bacteria resulting in a recall of over 20,000 units as reported by dual shockers a collectible model of fallout's t51b helmet sought exclusively by at gamestop uh, was being recalled by the United States uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, and that the people that become the... What's that evil... What, what's that evil... Uh, that evil company uh, that uh, on the Fallout games? The, the Covenant? The Renovant? Oh, the... Wait. You talking <laughs> about this, this, the... Oh, the actual brothers. game. Oh. Not the Brotherhood of... Not the Brotherhood of Steel. I know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't recall. The Conclave. The Conclave, that's the one. Yeah, there yep. you go. Freaking Conclave ruining it for everybody. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, that's all I have to say about that particular one. All Thanks right. so much, uh, Mr. Santos. Mr. Chaos, what news piece do you got? Well, the first news I have is that, sadly, the Ghost Rider solo TV show is not happening. Da, da, da. What? Oh. Yeah. What, what uh, happened? I'm reading this off of GameSpot. Uh, I had this here right on it. Uh, where did it go? Uh, <laughs> not prepared. No, I had it here. <laughs> well, so okay, anyway, okay, okay. no, no, I found it. I found it. This, <laughs> uh, this is from GameSpot. The show has been canceled during development due to quote in uh, creative impasse that could not be resolved according to Deadline. Ghost Rider is the only show affected by the dispute, however. The other announced Marvel live-action project, Hellstorm, is apparently proceeding as planned. I don't even know what that is, but whatever. Hellstorm will join the roster of upcoming Marvel animated projects on Hulu, including Tiger and Dazzler, Hitmonkey, Howard the Duck, and MODOK, all slated for release sometime in 2020. And apparently the character is not dying there, though, because Gabriel Luna had been set to reprise the role of Robbie Reyes for the show after the beauty of the character in Agents... Of yes. shields. So oh. hopefully, oh no, this is. I thought it was coming back to Agents of Shield. No, no, no. He was set to replace to reprise the role, but that is not happening. This is. I was actually kind of looking forward to this because even though I don't know a whole lot about Ghost Rider, I was. I was really like something good because I, I liked how the character looked and I, I, the little bit I know, I really do like. So it would have been cool to have a. Live action TV show, you know, something that's considerably better than the movies, because seriously, that he was... is. Uh, I have I've seen all the Marvel's Agents of Shield, and there is a season where he comes, he becomes part of the storyline, and it's pretty cool. It's a lot cooler than I thought it was going to be. I was like, oh, I like this fucking character. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what, like, I, I, I never watched the episode, but I always heard that that it was a very, very good episode. The Ghost Rider was like, was, was a badass and this and that. And like, so it got me kind of hyped and like to just find out that it's just not happening unless by some kind of miracle Disney, you know, makes it in Disney Plus or whatever. I don't think Poss- this is happening. Possibly, mm. sir. Possibly. However, speaking of miracles, oh. Sony and Walt Disney Studios have come to an agreement over a potential third Spider-Man movie featuring Ooh. Tom Holland. Ooh. The two... <laughs> That's not it's so fake. The two I know. Media... It, 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 to be fair, it's because, it's because I, of course, when we heard the news for the first time, I was legitimately excited. We were all legitimately excited. So we're just... you know, People know this by now, but we need, still need to report I on know, it because I it's know. important. <laughs> The two media conglomerates have announced that Marvel Studios uh, and its president, Kevin Feige, will return to produce uh, a sequel to Spider-Man Far From Home. The new flick will hit theaters on July 16th of 2021. 
Uh, a little month ago, of course, you guys know, news broke that Sony and Disney had uh, unfortunately broken uh, bonds or just decided to split ways. Uh, Sony obviously owns the license to the character, arguably Mar- Marvel's most successful superhero. That is definitely arguably. Uh, and may legally keep it so long as it continues to produce Spider-Man movies. Uh, Sony does have a lineup of Spider-Man shit that's coming. So, uh, But looks like the Tom Holland Spider-Man has been saved. Uh, and this would be good news, I think, maybe? Yeah, that, oh, yeah definitely. It, it, make, it makes me wonder what kind of deal they came to agree on. Yeah, oh, we will never gosh. know. We'll never yeah. know. I'm hoping Sony did not cave and say, "Okay, I'll give you fifty percent." Because I hope son of a bitch, yeah, it's yeah. just. All right, so uh, what's my next piece? So, oh yes, fans are upset over Call of Duty's Modern Warfare's year-long PS4 exclusive mode uh, and Infinity Wars reacts. Uh, there is a mode that's going to be exclusive to PS4, and obviously uh, fans are not happy, including uh, PlayStation 4 owners. Uh, during Sony's latest State of Play live stream, Activision took the opportunity to reveal a brand new story trailer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, giving us our first real look at its Rift from the Headlines campaign. Following this trailer, the, a screen popped up with the text, Special Ops Survival Mode Play First on PlayStation 4, and with and then much, much smaller text at the bottom. It read time exclusive content until October 1st, 2020. Uh, as Modern Warfare hits PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC on October 25th, this means that this mode will be locked out uh, complete uh, on competing platforms for just under a year, uh, in which time the next Call of Duty will be likely to be out or nearing its release. Uh, so naturally, fans notice this fine print, and immediately uh, they, they, you know, word spread fast. Uh, not only are Xbox and PC players upset, but uh, about the exclusive mode, but PS4 players generally are particularly pleased with the exclusive either, especially with Modern Warfare being uh, a cross-play enable game. So even the other uh, Spec Ops. Oh, it is cross-play. That's right. It's one yeah. of the first ones. Okay. So even if other spec uh, spec ops modes don't appear to be time exclusive, uh, oh sorry, even if uh, yeah, even if the other uh, spec ops modes don't appear to be time exclusive, uh, even with previous Call of Duty games uh, often having time exclusive content on PS4, this appears to be one step too far for fans, and of course the reactions of the like you if, if you go to twitter or or social media in general i mean they're definitely letting uh, their voices heard because uh you know it, it's it's bad enough that uh when they pick uh portions of the, when they pick apart a game maps or weapons and make it a, a exclusive that is not uh, a big deal but when you have a a a mode of a game you know ripped out uh that that feels like you're not getting the complete package you know and 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 that's what i mean by when i say that yeah i can feel why they're you know they'll be upset about that because uh suddenly they're not getting a complete package of the, the game. value the value is not there they're they're the they're paying 60 dollars for the same game that we're paying but or Sony, the Sony players will be paying, uh, and obviously it's it's devalued by not having the additional mode. It's right. a dick move. Uh, it's funny because I didn't even notice it. Like I noticed, like I saw that uh, state of play on Tuesday, and I've seen the trailer a few times, and I never, <laughs> never even noticed it. So it's it must be very small print because I didn't even notice that, that was even uh, on there. That's but how, uh, that's how small it was, yeah, yeah. So clearly, it was a dick move. Uh, and it does devalue the game, but uh, yeah, Mr. Chaos, what you got, sir? Apex Legends season three launch trailer. I haven't watched it, but I do have a news item here from The Verge that reveals that there's a brand new map for whatever reason, it has a moving train in it. <laughs> that sounds cool. That actually, I, I like I said, I haven't watched the trailer, but the fact that it's a new map, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, what is it? Uh, PUBG had mm-hmm. rotating maps. It yeah, it does yeah. 
So wait, so, uh, so this is going to be a rotating map or a whole new like, hey, you're n we're not going to see the old map anymore. Well, I hope we see, still see the old map again. I just hope they do the rotating because you know the old map still pretty cool. I don't know. Uh, I don't see here anywhere in uh, this is going to be rotating. Mm. But I hope they don't. What is it? They don't retire the previous map. Regardless, the thing uh, the, the news item says respawn made a bomb sale announcement for its Apex Legend Battle Royale shooter this morning, revealing a brand new map for its upcoming third season that's arriving in just a few days. Which reminds me, I gotta finish my challenges. <laughs> the, new, the new destination called World's Edge is where molten heat and chemical ice collide, indicating players will be facing off in an extreme temperature environment. I all I read there is there's a lot of things that are going to kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the teaser trailer for the map, we can see both icy and lava-filled battlefields in a twist on the exist existing dropship. Oh, in the in a twist on the existing dropship, there's also a moving train, which should add a very interesting mobile element to World's Edge. Respawn says the location, alongside the New Legend Crypto, will be arriving with Season 3 next week on October 1st. Whew. Nice. Nice. Sounds like I need to get back into that and get my ass handed to me like I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you were gonna join you were gonna jump back to Monster Hunter World and I'm still waiting. Yeah, but see I have to buy Monster Hunter World. <laughs> <laughs> I already have Apex. That's a lot easier, uh, you know, promise. <laughs> the Apex. My last piece, guys. How do you guys feel about Batman in general? Oh god. I love it. I, my I, favorite superhero. It's my second favorite superhero. Nice. First, spawn. Nah. Oh yeah, I guess I should have guessed that. Nice. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of offended you didn't know that already. I know. I, I'm actually a little disappointed in myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last weekend, in its first post since 2015, Warner Brothers Twitter account posted uh, some interesting stuff. First off, they posted a video which was flashing. Uh, four symbols flashing in front of a bat signal. Uh, the symbols were posted again uh, yesterday. This was uh, a few days ago, so yesterday from this post. Uh, this time in a much clearer format, along with the words, quote, capture the night, end quote. Uh, there, was some, there was also some kind of night slash night pun going on in the uh, French, uh, in a French bit or something like that. It's all rather mysterious. But a couple of clues pointed towards this title being focused on a sinister organization called the Court of Owls. Uh, last oh. year, one yes, okay, <laughs> peaked, peaked. I heard the peak. Um, yeah. Uh, last year, Warner Brothers Montreal, a producer, tweeted a photo of a T-shirt with an owl-like logo, while Batman writer Scott Snyder recently wrote in a now deleted tweet: "Wait for it." Hashtag beware of beware of the court of owls. So it seems like the new game coming from Warner Brothers, not Rocksteady guys. This yeah. is Warner Brothers. Just important to know. Um, will feature the the organization in some new form. Uh, there was some rumors. This is me talking now. This has nothing to do with the article. Uh, there were some rumors thinking that uh, the state of play would show off this particular game. Unfortunately, it did not. Nothing was revealed there. Uh, but if they are going to use the Court of Owls in the game, they fucking better do that shit right. Because <laughs> yeah. that is a one of the more recent storylines of, of, of Batman, but it's become a quintessential story. It's one of those where you you, you have to, you got to read that one. It's a great, great uh, series. Uh, the Court of Owls, if you're not familiar with it, is... Uh, this organization that is as old as Gotham itself, essentially. Um, so they've been there. There's a secret organization. And when you think about it, the entire history of Batman has happened. And he's never run into this organization. But they've been there. <laughs> you know, that's how freaking awesome that uh, the, the storyline is and, and or this, these new characters are. Um and it's they introduce a lot of new things like Robin was supposed to be part of them and and all this. So I'm interested to see how they do it, and I'm very fascinated to see what the game looks like, especially because, uh, well, just because you know I can see I seem being the was it the uh, Arkham Knight how beautiful that game looked minus of course the uh, stupid the stupid Batmobile, um, you know I and can I, I 
and the the yeah well they have the the PC issues too as well um, overall but uh, curious to see what it what what they come up with there and hopefully they don't screw it up. Uh, however, this is Warner Brothers that we're talking about, and yeah. not even being a rock steady joint. And after seeing the disaster that was Batman Origins, I will stay the hell away from this until I yeah. saw some heavy reviews and at least a couple of patches in. <laughs> couple Honestly, of patches. I was going to point that out. Let's just remember the last time that Warner Brothers tried to do something on their own, it wasn't great. Got Origins. Yeah. yeah. Which, that? to be fair, I heard that the story itself was pretty good. That the problem was all the bugs and glitches the game actually had. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, they didn't uh, uh, clean it up enough. That's right. So that's, that's also. So, I mean, well, true, I, but I'm I still. Know. Yeah, I'm. I'm hopeful. We'll see. I mean, they did make the first. Uh, well, I don't think that was them. Who who made the uh, the Lord of the Rings game? That was them, right? That was uh, well. That was Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, that, not they were not the developed. Word, but there were the polisher and oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see. All right, so my last piece is not really a piece uh, of news, but more like a commentary on something that, that I noticed uh, this week. That nobody, I don't hear anybody talking about in the, uh, on the on the media, and it is very disconcerting. So Mario Kart Tour. Uh, was released this uh, this week, I believe, and the game yeah. has racked already tons of tons of downloads. You know, people, uh, you know, a lot of people are playing this 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 game. At least on the Google Play Store right now, is number you know is is number one. The game is a ridiculous loot box ridden crash gra- crash grab. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow! To one of the worst degrees that you have seen. Not only oh that, God. not only that. The game, and I've gotten this from reports that, uh, uh, and 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 from um, from stuff that that I've read, but it hasn't been out there. Like you don't see this. Like Kotaku hasn't mentioned this, for example. Oh, the great Kotaku. Uh, you know, you don't see it on Polygon. You don't see it on. Uh, I I think it was. I want to say it was probably a YouTube video that I saw from, you know, uh, from someone that that gives just, you know, random, you know, random pieces of news. Uh, but and they were showing and, and they were showing this and yeah apparently there's a lot of RNG loot box on you know on it uh, a lot of literal pay to win uh, what yes yeah yeah uh, the the <laughs> the thing has the thing has wow. a a a monthly premium subscription service oh my and, god and the premium subscription service I mean you can buy stuff separate or you could go you can pay five dollars a month to be part of this subscription uh service where they're holding hostage the 200 cc mode again mm-hmm. another game mode uh mm-hmm. that that gets that gets parted uh and it gets put into this this category you can only play the two uh, the 200 cc mode if you are paying the five dollar uh five dollars a month i want to remind you guys, oh I and mean, by the way there's no fucking multiplayer in Mario Kart Tour. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's no multiplayer in Mario uh, Kart Tour. You heard that right. No, I'm it, deleting that off my phone. It, it, it is... It, it is... And of course, what baffles me is, again, nobody mentioning anything about this. When you think about something like Apple Arcade, or recently I just realized Google has uh, Google play no that's the name of the store but uh it has some it, it has something that was oh pe- play pass google play pass well they're both five dollars you get a shit ton of games that you can play especially on the on, on the apple arcade you get you know uh, some really good titles you know some uh console quality you know uh uh indie titles that have you know that have that that are even exclusive to it and Nintendo expects you to pay five dollars a month just f- to play Mario Kart Tour. Five dollars oh a month. Wow. But because it's Nintendo, you don't hear the anything you know anything about you know that that the 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 big thing online. You know, uh, as if this was coming from Sony or Microsoft, heaven forbid. 
out of you know? out of all the things that Nintendo could have caught up on, they chose that. Yeah. This this is this is their mobile strategy. And let me tell you, so far they, it's it's like they haven't I, I think they're just throwing ideas in the dark. They haven't struck the balance just yet because they started with what appeared to be a, a good form, which was the Super Mario Run where you pay in you pay ahead, you get the whole game. Uh, they gave too much away uh, of it, so people. But by, by the time that it was that you hit that paywall, people were like, eh, "I got enough of it already." Uh, when in reality, they should have actually just charged from the get go, and they mm -hmm. would have gotten. You know, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of demos, but in this case, for a mobile for this mobile game, it probably gave too much, and that game didn't do fantastic. It do it it did okay, but not fantastic like Nintendo was hoping. Uh, and since then, they have been, you know, pulling the needle too far, too far to one side, too far to the other. They have been able to strike a balance, and 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 then this 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 travesty, you know, with 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 a beloved uh, series, you know, Mario Kart, that could have been something great on on mobile, but no, they're still stuck. When games, when other games, mobile games are are starting to. Maybe hide is not the right word, but they they started to to stray away from the very 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 uh, obvious exploitive, mm -hmm. exploitive uh, pay to win things. Uh, Nintendo is just discovering it. You know, <laughs> just like, discovering it. We we can make money. We can make money if we sell. You know the the items at a price. I like I, I the only thing I haven't heard is consumables. And I bet they're there. Oh, I, I, I bet. I, I bet if you want a blue shell, you got to pony up a dollar. Wow. <laughs> you know. So yeah, that's uh, that's my commentary on that. <laughs> uh, Mister Chaos, did you have anything else? My last piece, guys. How do you feel about Sony selling consoles and physical games directly <laughs> from them? Uh, um, sounds like they're saying the hell with uh, uh, GameStop. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll rather get them from Amazon. Thank you. Why? That way, because I because I, ha I have a, a decent no return policy. If something comes <laughs> goes awry with Sony, I probably have to wait. <laughs> this probably. is true. The yeah, the Amazon is definitely very customer friendly when it comes to that, yeah. and Sony uh, won't even let me. Replace the game I accidentally bought. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not saying I want the money back. I just want to get the PS4 version, not yeah. the PS3 I accidentally bought. And they're no, like, nope. Yep. So, in other words, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks. What do you think of it, sir? I think it's great. I mean, I, I don't know about dealing with Sony for customer service, but to skip the retailer... Sure, why not? Interesting. I I just hope that at some point, which this is just a pipe dream, but whatever, is that this would reduce cost of the items themselves. Well, that's that that's the question, right? That's the retailer hope. retailers have an incentive to lower price because they 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 need to clear out the inventory. What incentive will Sony have to do the same if they control the inventory? You know. Yeah. I could definitely say when it comes to the I mean I have I have probably 200 and something games on my uh on my uh PlayStation that I, that I've just in this generation alone and, and I'm I'm saying close to 300 it's a lot of games you've seen the list bro because you you've gone mm -hmm. through it on the thing um and a lot of those are from sales um, right the majority of them from sales and they, and they're like these crazy flash sales. And I'm not saying that they're going to just be doing that with consoles, but you don't know. They can be saying, Hey, let's just get, let's get these, I don't know, these weird blue playstations out of here so we can make room mm -hmm. for the newest one, you know, and they may drop them, you know what I mean? And even, uh, controllers and stuff like that. It's possible. And it's coming directly from them. Uh, plus there are, um, perks for the, I found I'm mistaken perks for PlayStation plus members. I think you're able to get one day shipping, uh, on those things. Now, can Sony handle one day shipping? Who knows? You know, that that's, uh, the logistics are probably, 
the logistics are probably uh, there if they have an agreement with like FedEx. You know, they're probably not going to be shipping like to the extent that uh, the Amazon will be shipping, for example. But my point is that every ret- uh, every direct, um, not retailer, but the, the 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 every company that I've seen that makes their own, you know, that ma- makes their own stuff. Let's say, you know, whether it's Sony TV, you know, for example, right? Go look, go look at the price of a Sony TV right now at the store, at the Sony store, just to give you an example. And then look at the same TV at any retailer. Pick, like, just throw, just, just, just blindly pick one. And you'll see there is, there's usually a huge discrepancy because the, the factory, they don't, they, don't, they don't have an incentive to deviate from the MSRP. They believe the MSRP is the MSRP. Mm-hmm. But retailers, because they have to make clearance, because they they have yeah, they to gotta space, move the product out. Yeah, they gotta sense. move the product exactly. They're willing to take anything, even if that, inc- even including a loss. Like when, like for example, remember when Fala when <laughs> remember the 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 the, the, the Xbox, uh, the Xbox One that had Fallout included. It was a perfectly functional Xbox One. It had nothing wrong except the fact that it had it had the the, the, the picture of Fallout game in it, and and obviously the game. <laughs> and that should drop the that price. That shit was yeah. not selling. It was not moving. Now Microsoft didn't lower the price out there on the Microsoft Store because look at it. He was staying the same. No retailers did. <laughs> you know retailers gave that shit away like with. 30, it was almost like a 35% at one point, right? It was something ridiculous. So that's why while I, while I can appreciate that Sony, it, you know, it, it, it's handling, you know, the, the, the sale of hardware now directly. Microsoft has been doing it since they began and they have never pulled a, 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 you know, a bundle at a decent price, not on their sword directly. True, you know, I don't but, have a reason to believe that Sony will be different because it's they're Sony. You know what I mean? That's true. But we're also talking about an Xbox One. Oh! No. Oh, <laughs> oh, you mean that? You mean the system that? <laughs> you mean the system that is not selling, and because of that, they should actually they should have they more should incentives do a to, sale. <laughs> to lower the price. You know, exactly. they do price cuts, but they don't. But but that they call that price cut the new MSRP. <laughs> so. All right, guys, uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with our Hot Topic. Topic. Hot Topic. Welcome back, people. It is time for our Hot Topic of the Week. Hot Topic. Hot Topic. That's right. Joining us from the beyond is Optimus Prime from <laughs> Technodrome. I'm sorry. Apparently, I'm having technical difficulties with my headset today. <laughs> for whatever no. reason. Please it's excuse. Okay. Please pardon our dust. We, we mentioned that this uh, episode is going to be different in many, many ways. <laughs> many ways that you will never ever know it is but let's let's face it by the time that you guys listen to this episode it's gonna be october which means this is our spooktacular episode <laughs> <laughs> of the hot topic of the week yeah oh. we're scaring ourselves with this one. Oh, what's it what's the name of this show again what's the name of this podcast the uh mouthful Oh yeah, the awful. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I couldn't trick you. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice so try, Yeah, we're still under embargo of our name. We're not, we can't say our the name of our podcast. Uh so the hot topic of the week, guys, uh it was a pick of mine. Uh and I wanted to bring it up because of a contribution of one of our our uh uh, group members, uh, uh-huh. Jason Fariello, posted not too long ago uh, a video that I found super, super interesting that that had to do with the ownership, with the, our ownership of digital uh, titles in, okay. in, in, in this case. You know, obviously you can have, you know, audio, audio books, you can have the movies and all stuff like that, but we're applying it to 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 game. 
two games and making a differentiation of, of that. So, and this all comes from uh, a French group, <laughs> excuse me, uh, a French consumer group who took recently took Steam to court over not allowing the resale of games. Uh, uh, the, the the major things. Uh, that the, the the major thing that this uh, French consumer group thinks that is problematic uh, is well, they have like four or five points. I'll, I'll mention a few. Uh, it says Steam subscriber agreement explicitly forbids the user to sell their games despite the transfer of ownership of digital or product licenses being legal. Uh, another point: Valve declines any responsibility in case they get hacked and users' personal info gets stolen. The other mm. point, yeah, the other point, uh, Valve claims ownership on the rights of any user-created content uploaded to Steam. Uh, and the other one is, uh, it is impossible to get uh, to get the money on your Steam wallet back if your account is closed, deleted, or banned. So, uh, that was some other point, but these are, uh, are the major ones. Uh, the thing that struck... True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because especially the, the fact of saying, "Oh, we don't have, we're not responsible," uh, you know, for your personal information if it gets stolen. I mean, I, I don't know if that's exactly what it's saying. Or I, I admit I'm not a legal expert or anything like that. But it just sounds to me, it just sounds to me like it, <laughs> we already, you know, PC, PC gamers have already uh, uh, ingrained into using. Steam as the major game delivering platform. It's not the mm-hmm. only one, but it's the one more prevalent. And maybe it was always on the terms of service. Who knows? But uh, realizing this, so seriously, yeah. Damn. Well, yeah. They, they sh- he said he should. We should read those seriously. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, yeah, okay. if you have if you have a game, if you have a day. <laughs> Uh, which I always find, by the way, hilarious when we have games that before you start playing, it gives you the terms of service because they're usually live games. And it's like, nope, I just want to play the game. Nobody's going to have time to read that. <laughs> and you're probably giving them your rights, you know, their rights to your firstborn son or something like that. Anyway, who knows? Um, anyways, uh, I just wanted to focus on the main thing, which was uh, the, the, the forbidden of selling used games, or not, sorry, not used games, sorry, of selling your digital uh, library. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you, yeah. And applying it in general, you know, let's take this broader because obviously we have, you know, we have PSN, we have Xbox, uh, Xbox Live, and all, all this other services. What are you guys' thoughts on, oh, for, for, first of all, do, do you think you, Guys should be allowed. We should be allowed to sell our digital content. Uh, let's start with that. Uh, very simple. Let's start okay. with that first. All right, I'm gonna take it up first. Um, as much as I would love to say yes, even if you could measure it, like the value of a game in, at at any given particular time, this will affect the companies no matter how you slice it, and. I don't know if they're if they will go for it. Like, is there any way that they, they will go for this? Well, I don't think I don't think they would go for it. Um, so it would have to be like something like happening where their hand would have to be forced. Um, so I think the, I mean, I guess the question comes to it: how much, you know, <clears throat> what do they call it? But you know, what do they say? Uh, possession is nine tenths of the law. Do you do you actually? own that that piece of uh of the, you know the, mm-hmm. are you actually do you actually own it and that's the mm-hmm. that's the question that comes in and and what he it looks like sounds from the steam um terms and condition a lot of it seems to be well it looks like it does right i mean it all all signs point to it being something you own so you should be able to do something with it you should be able to you know uh i don't know if it's I don't know if it's something that can't like if we can force a hand on it. It would be very interesting, um, but obviously that I know they would. I'm sure that they would fight back on it because it's 
they're going to be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> this is money yeah, out of our pocket mean, again. Yeah. Right. They're going to lose money. Like, no matter how you slice it, they're, gonna, they're going to lose money. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It, it's because uh, one thing is to sell uh, your, your, your game, your digital, your, your, your CD, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, that's allowed. Right. That, you know, you, you can go to GameStop and, 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 and sell your stuff and, and you get money, you know, get money back for it, but that's not allowed with, uh, with digital, with digital items. And, and it's interesting. Is it because it's a something or rather it's not something tangible? It's not something that you can actually, cause I mean, let's, let's look at other physical media, right? If you, your, your iTunes, uh, music mm. or your Kindle books, um, or stuff like that that you you have to buy, right? You, mm. I've, I have a bunch of books from um, Audible, right? Yeah. Uh, and technically, I bought them; they, they're mine, I, you know. And and you know that's that's. But I, what can I do with them? You know, is it because it is just data, and and that's where the line is is kind of drawn? Like, well, you really can't do much with that because it's just technically there's nothing tangible. You know, and I wonder if that's what the line is. I think the line the line comes from the fact that physical items deteriorate, mm-hmm. digital items do not. For the most part, they 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 do not. I mean, how 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 can you how used is my digital copy of Spider Man? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like yeah. uh, there is there, there's no way there, there's no way to 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 tell that a CD a physical item can degrade, uh, but digital does not. And, and and that's the point where and, and also this is this is not to mention the 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 the, the, the incredibly the, the incredible morbid effect that this could have on the gaming industry in general uh you know cuz at first I was like I was thinking of man if I can cash out of my Steam, you know, library of games. Uh, I will have more money to buy newer games and give and 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 you know and spend back and put on the. But that's not really the way it works, right? If you can just buy one, you know, if if the if the developer can sell you one game, and then that one digital copy could be sold over and over and over and over and over. And they're not; they're only getting the the the, the revenue of just the one sale of the first sale. That's right. The, you know, of, of the first sale. Like, how does that you know benefit them in in, in any way? And I know that uh, us of uh, us of uh, you know gamers in general, I, I say, you know that I know that we have become pretty jaded about publishers uh, sometimes uh, exploiting you know the the the, the gaming community with you know loot boxes and, and and crap like that but we also have to think that <laughs> having having it the other way is not is not feasible you know you can't really have a a what would you call a uh, a gaming industry in general uh of if if you have a publisher just if you have a, a developer just getting revenue f- for the sale of you know for the one time sale of an item and then that sale could be resold in perpetuity you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know? they would never it would never um, and, and I don't blame it for that you know what I mean like I said it's that's money out of their pocket um but there's something that you said about you know something that you that you technically paid for that you own you know what I mean um and I see what you're saying it doesn't degrade as mm-hmm. far as quality right um, but it would de- not degrade, but it would devalue uh, with time, right? Because How think so? of well, think of um, think of the flash sales, right? Uh-huh. Um, how 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 they just drop to like like to give it a perfect example. Game comes out from PlayStation, it's sixty bucks. Mm-hmm. In a year or two, it's on their best selling list, meaning that they're at nineteen ninety nine. That's the that's the new like uh, retail value. Mm. Uh, so the value's dropped. Why is it dropped? Because popularity of it has, has waned over the years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you own that digital copy, you're not going to be able to, let's say you were able to, let's say you were able to sell it for, for, you know, sell a digital copy back. Mm. You're not going to be able to sell it for 60 bucks that you pay for because True. everywhere is out there. It's at 20 bucks because that's right. the value of it now. 
so that's that would be a way of of sort of adding or, uh, you know sort of lowering the the price because the whole deal is obviously well i assume they don't want you to sell it back to them the 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 the, the publisher it's selling it to other people because that's the whole deal. We we are mm-hmm. able to do that with um, used games right now. It, we get it back to mm-hmm. GameStop. It's used. It's it's devalued at this point, and and that's why they give you very little for it. <laughs> five dollars, five dollars or right. something. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, the same thing would apply. The what? <laughs> this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I think that would in that case it would work. But obviously there would have to be some sort of master list you know or listing that would say well this game is now valued at this because of the because of its popularity it's not something play like life of black tiger for instance should be a 50 cent game (laughs) you're saying you know maybe maybe even less you know what i mean yeah yeah but the difference here the difference here will be well let's say (laughs) let's let's pick let's pick another uh random example let's say anthem you know, mm-hmm. which uh, they're having on a sale for eight bucks in so you know in 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 Europe. I I saw that Eurogamer. Oh, wow. uh, so you this is eight bucks still that at least the the the, the publisher could get if they're the one controlling the the you know the cost rather than eight bucks that they'll never see. You know that turns into rather than getting you know let's say a hundred people's eight bucks. You know, uh, turning into eight hundred dollars uh, revenue, they're getting zero. They're getting only eight bucks because I bought a copy and just kept and, and they kept selling on forward, forward, forward to a hundred people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I think they will see even even if there was that devaluement of, of, of the digital good, and I completely think it's fair. Uh, you know, uh, a copy of <laughs> uh, of two uh, K. Well, but what's that basketball game? Uh, twenty. Oh, yeah, two K twenty twenty twenty. Let's say let's say two thousand seven. Well, actually, that's probably vintage. So let's say twenty thirteen <laughs> should not cost sixty dollars, right? No. <laughs> you know, but they 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 might still sell it, and they might still get something. They might still prefer to get something than than the nothing. It's it's a game that they publish. And and it is revenue that we're hoping that they're sharing with you know with the developers, with the creators, etc. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if I, th- th- there's those those part of me or there's part of me, I, I bet in a lot of people that think, oh hell yeah, I would love to get money back for the digital games that I bought, especially you know those games that I regret <laughs> purchasing, you know. Uh, yeah, I have Anthem, Des- <laughs> Destiny One. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, Destiny One had its good moments. I know, I know. At the beginning, I'm thinking. At the beginning, I don't know. Yeah, it's some good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Batman Arkham Knight, for example. I would love to get my you know, my money back. Hello. Hello. I think we lost David. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, there you I'm are. Here. Oh. What the hell was that? Welcome I... to our wacky podcast. <laughs> wacky podcast. Sorry, guys. Uh, so what? So what was the saying? Uh, so, yeah, realistic. I think. I think. Um, so I'm not. I'm not sure the angle you're coming because sounds like you're you're in defense of not having it uh, digital. You know, um, or you're. I guess maybe you're trying to explain why it would be a bad thing. I, um, I would. I would say if if you were to ask me, what's my point? I do not need the. Uh, you know, we I, I would not want the 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 chance of selling, of of us being sell, you know being able to sell our used uh, our used. I keep selling you our <laughs> used digital games. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, our titles that we have played already. We should you know we, uh, uh, we should not. And I realize that that is very con- that might be controversial to some because it sounds uh, very anti-consumer. But uh, yes, uh, there it, it sounds good. You know, it, it it sounds like very pro-consumer being able to sell your digital goods. But that's just gonna hurt the industry. So. Uh, and then I was hoping to see if any one of you will have the the devil advocacy, you know, for it. But well, it seems like to be fair, I mean, yeah, it, it 
it can possibly hurt because that was the same. That's the same argument that was brought up when the first you game use game debate came out, right? Mm. When they were like, "Oh, but think of the publisher that you or the developer that you're not giving money to when you buy that game used from GameStop." Well, that uh-huh. didn't stop people from guy, buying from GameStop, and it didn't stop the publishers and developers from making money. Yeah, did it take a cut? Sure. Well, but, I will you know argue I mean? that it did hurt because no, no, I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm it, not saying it didn't hurt, but I'm saying they didn't stop them from. Oh no, from, no, from you know what I mean. So right. they, they were able to con- to to continue. But when 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 the de- when developer and and this is and this is one of the main reasons why I wouldn't want this to 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 what I wouldn't want this law to set up bad precedents uh, into you know into a whole uh, you know media complex. If is if you have the if you go ahead and and. Uh, if oh shit, I lost my train of thought on that one. I wrote that. <laughs> no, no, no. What I, what, what I was gonna say, if 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 that's suddenly allowed, okay. Now now uh, developers and and publishers are gonna be forced to find other ways of bringing revenue, and that's when you start seeing the increment of of uh, loot boxing Oops. and and you know and pay to win and and you know crap crap like that that. It is not surprised that it have actually grown kind of in tangent with the uh, with the uh, with with, with the, uh, the the people being able to to sell their games to GameStop. And I'm not saying I'm opposed to that. I really like the idea that was done back in I want to say it was probably 2010 ish, where they were doing the oh you can sell the the, the your, your use game. And if I bought it used, I still had to pay ten dollars, for example, to play the multiplayer. You know, to have access to or to have access to some content, and that and that money supposedly was going towards the publisher. Yes, it was sounds. The, uh, what was it called? It was a was it a it was a game pass, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was like yeah, it was. Uh, it it was a. Uh, I, I, well, it was some sort of pass. I, yeah, I yeah, it was some pass. It was yeah. something that EA was doing of all company of all companies, and everybody was like online pass. Against, it was an online, online pass. pass. There you oh go. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I agree with that. Yeah, that was okay. okay. Yeah, it yeah, was. I, I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. I mean, I I get it. I get the reason why because it's like, look, I get it. You're buying a used copy, mm-hmm. so you're not really getting the money to us, but you do want to use our server. So yeah, you know, right. it's like, you know, it's like it's fair is only fair, and chances are, you know, if you pay fifty five dollars for the used copy, then you know you're the idiot. You should yeah. you should have just bought the regular <laughs> copy. You know what I mean? So you know. yeah, and 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 oh, or you know, maybe it was not GameStop. Maybe I, you know, you bought it, uh, you know, from a friend or something like that. That that's all fair, uh, but I just, if of in one hand. You, we're constantly, of course, uh, uh, blaming the, the 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 publisher because they're always finding, you know, nefarious ways of of, of you know of, of trying to make money and doing the loot boxing and all this crap. Uh, but on the other hand, we can't be blinded to the reasoning be, uh, you know, behind behind that, or one of the main factors, uh, and that is that they need to keep they need to continue to grow. Because unfortunately, some of these companies are uh, are beholden to their share, you know, to their shareholders, and they can do it the right way, like you know, like the people from City Project Red uh, does, or they could do it the wrong way, like freaking EA and the Activisions of the world, you know. I'd argue that EA may be doing it the right way when it comes to money, because they still make billions. Uh, yeah, yeah, of for of their really tactics, with though. That. Of their of their <laughs> tactics, although, and, and when you think about it, look look at the more profitable um, uh, business mo- model, which is the you know the loot boxing on sport games. I will argue the sport games are mostly play uh, people that are very into sports, not necessarily a lot into video games. It doesn't necessarily yeah, not into the industry. Yeah, exactly. Not into the main. Industry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, but they feed that. They, they feed them very nicely. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Too. Especially FIFA. FIFA is huge worldwide, and that thing's just a that thing's just a money printer. It is yeah. what it is. So, 
Yeah. But, I think um, that. I, yeah. I think, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm no, sorry. I just, I, okay. Yeah. I, I don't. Because trying to get back on topic, though, it, it's kind of hard to, like, argue for it. Don't you think? Is yeah. That, uh, argue I, I guess it could. For, for, for being able to sell it? Yeah. Oh. Right. I agree. Yeah. I was just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree, um, but I, I mean, here's here's what I think would happen if if it was it was something that would move that way with loot boxes right now. I don't know if you guys know, but the Church of England has already deemed loot boxes as gambling. <laughs> so <laughs> the Church of England is against loot boxes. So uh, obviously that just kind of moved things into a dire- uh, into a direction, and I I just see loot boxes suddenly becoming a bad thing where they're just going to say, you know what, let's just, let's figure something else out. Uh, and then now you're, now let's say, for instance, they, they allow you to sell your digital copies, um, you know, to people or back to a company or whatever the case may be. Mm. Uh, that's just going to raise the price of, of, of games. You know, games are not going to be 60 bucks anymore. Yeah. You know, CD project reds, uh, what is it? Cyberpunk, whatever is going to be a hundred dollar game, $120 yeah. game. That's the only way. So yeah. I, agree i don't think it will happen uh, and i think it and I, I, I agree with the two of you that i think it's it won't happen because it shouldn't because it can be detrimental um but at the same time it's it's hard to argue where you go well yeah i am spending money anything i spend money on i actually that i actually own that i can say i own because of the deal if it's a one time use thing like a like a movie ticket right you go to see a movie in the theaters you have that one pass to see it once you don't own the movie you just went mm-hmm. to see it once so um that's not the case with a digital product right even digital films i, I think I can they see want it a million it. times yeah I, I think they 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 wanted to feel well. Yeah, as far as the consumption goes, yeah, yeah, I I agree. Uh, but I think they wanted to make it look like well, you have a perpetual subscription. Let's say you know you could do you could watch it a hundred times, you can play it a thousand times, or you know, for the rest of your life, but you're not allowed to sell it to anyone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, I, even though I. I mean, it kind of it kind of makes me think of if, if there's any other platform, digital platform, where selling your items is a lot, where selling your your digital goods is allowed. You know, you know, I, and I'm not talking about digital stores, or, or I'm not talking about creating. You know, you created something in a game and you sell it. You know, or you got something in the game and, and you and you sell it. Because we already we already know that market is there. That market is established. I'm talking about you bought. You know, this uh, this video. This I, I can't think of a uh, this piece of media mm-hmm. from you know from a, from a publisher. And now you are allowed to, you know, you already played it, used it, and now you are allowed to sell it forward. Just like you say, what establish? First of all, what establishes the price? Are you establishing the price? And 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 if you are or or are not, does the developer ha- has has the right for a cut? You bought it, you you own it, it's yours. Except that maybe it's not yours. If you if we take time to read those. Uh, terms of services, more often than not, you're gonna find that all you have is a uh, un, you know, unsellable license to a, you know, to a game, you know, and 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 even and I've seen that even in um, in physical goods, you know, it's just that that has never been enforced by 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 no entity, you know, you can still go to a GameStop and trade in your copy of. Super well, Mario they attempted to. Too. I mean, that's they the thing. tried it. They, they tried yeah. to. They tried to stop it, and it just didn't. It didn't go anywhere. It was yeah. overturned. It's like no, that's their property. They can sell it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is there. There is one thing. There is a. There is a thing called the doctrine of exhaustion, uh, which oh, wow. is basically which Big basically words. the huh? Big words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't pronounce it correctly, but it's it's basically the right to sell your goods. Yeah, that's basically all it is. You know, oh. I I, only, I I have the right to sell whatever is mine, but it doesn't seem to apply to digital goods. You know, for you know for for better for better or or, or worse. 
Um, should it? That's you know that's the question, right? Yeah. Uh, and that and that might be <laughs> that might be a much broader well, topic. <laughs> should it? That's and if point. and if you say yes, then how? How you uh-huh. how would you make it feasible? How, how, yeah, how would you make it a, a feasible business? You know, business. Thus, where, selling where it would forward. You compromise? <laughs> right, right, right. What what what's the part where where you can make it actually work? Because let's face it, if we're allowed to sell our games, you know, in perpetuity, then it's we're just heading into a crash. We're just gonna head into a big gaming another crash. crash. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's because... what happened before with the crash. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's exactly what happened before. They were selling uh, a bunch of <laughs> you can get. I remember you can get this is like oh my god, Atari uh, 2600 games. You can get a, yeah. a 10 pack, yeah. a 10 pack of games yeah. for like five, ten bucks. Yeah, and well, then this was around the same time that that uh, they were trying to sell new games at 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. The new game sat there, and they're like, no, I don't want what's, what's the better deal. Yeah, 10, yeah. Ten for ten for five bucks, or I just for the new one, one yeah. to be in the pack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> that's exactly the, what it is. Digital digital games are always nicely shrink wrapped. You know, they're always new. They're always shiny. Yeah. So, should they always cost sixty bucks? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I think. The, the the devaluation will come in, and it will mm-hmm. have to be via popularity. Um, and the thing is. Whose numbers do you use? You know, that's, that's the uh, who, who's right. Uh, right. Is there a federal? Is is, is 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 there like a like a trade commission for yeah. <laughs> for games for the valuation of of games and media and all that? Uh, and 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 also, you know, remember, there's a lot of a, a lot of this will cripple if not completely destroy the indie business. You know, the the indie oh, absolutely industry. because absolutely. those games. You know, for you know, for the mo- for the most part, in the vast majority, they're like small, incredible experiences, but they're you know, small they're all scale. digital, and they're yeah, all almost, digital. Yeah, they're almost exclusively digital. Yeah, it, the limited releases sometimes will will come out, but that's mm-hmm. that's only if it's good <laughs> and yeah. it's sold. Yeah, it has to like really stand out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. I yeah. don't know. I I kind of I I think I think I sit on the camp that it's a good idea in theory. But can dis- significantly lead to to big problems in the end, and, and or like I said, games become 100, 120 bucks. Yeah. So sure, you can sell your game, but we're gonna sell it to you first at 120. <laughs> you yeah, know what right. I mean? It's like, so I, I was like, <laughs> I think I'm on the hard hard side of, of, of this, uh, where I'm like, no, I I, I don't even want to give it the opportunity just because it 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 is. It is too dangerous, and I don't mean to sound like anti-competitive or anti-consumer or anything like that. But it is just—it opens the door to so many bad things, like mm-hmm. like uh, you know our games. So, like, imagine if every game that we buy from now on, just to avoid it being able to be uh, you know resold, is a live service game, you know. <laughs> Even our yeah. single player, you have yep. to be online. You have to authenticate. You have to, that's almost happening now. That's another now, thing. Now, feel, that's, you know. Yeah, that's another way around it. It's like that's that's a way around it that they would avoid it. You yeah, know what I mean? they're yeah, like, I... okay, all right. So the government says we can let you sell these games. Well, good luck selling it if you can't check in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it much. becomes useless, yeah. yeah, you can buy. You can buy. You can buy it for thirty bucks from your friend. But to be able to play online, you need to give us sixty bucks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. Somewhere on the line, but I don't know. It was it, it, Jason uh, uh, posted it, and and I thought it was a a great conversation starter. And and if you guys uh, that are listening have uh, have any questions, have any thoughts, because like I said. We're not in. We're not in any way, you know, experts on the, you know, on this matters. I bet that there's a, a bunch of things that you guys are thinking right now uh, that might be a, a very interesting, good way of implementing a like a partial sale. You know, being able to sell your, you know, your titles. So, you know, whatever. If you have ideas, I will encourage we'll, you guys. We will love to. He- we will love to hear them. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like I will love good uh, debate on the group about that. Yeah, yeah. I will. Not I, debate, I will, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, debates are fun. 
us. Uh, uh, as long as we keep it controlled. You know, we, we, we're all adults. You know, we, we know yeah. how to manage it. Actually, you know what? For a group of, you know, what? Like 400 and maybe 20 of them active. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it is actually very... Uh, you you don't you don't, you don't I, yeah there there hasn't been any bans for misconduct that I know of. <laughs> there have I mean, been bans for spanning, but I haven't banned anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't want to you want to you don't want to miss. Say, you say that now, and like, now tomorrow we're like, oh, now we gotta go ban this person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Jason. Oh, freaking Fariello. <laughs> Always, Jason. <laughs> Uh, I love Fariello. I miss that guy. Uh, Mad Dog, I'm going to take it sure. from here. and if you're, you're welcome to take us home on this one. Oh, okay. Well, uh, are there any final thoughts on the, on the topic or anything else you guys want to throw in there before we wrap it up? I think it's just a beautiful fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> it you, is. Love, you like the idea. Yeah, but, yeah, but I can't find like any way to like this is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to cost us more in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you know the game industry, is yeah. that they don't give you anything for free. <laughs> so no. you, you're going to end up paying big time. Oh, money. yeah. At some I'm, point or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm following this close because I am concerned. I, I'm definitely concerned. Uh, obviously, they... Having having this ruling, well, it 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 was it was ruled in in favor of the of the French consumer group, right? And and that's all fine. But that that doesn't mean that from now from now forward that precedent has been set. Obviously, uh, Valve is going to uh, is going to bring it, it's kind of so, Yeah, they're going to appeal. Yeah. Obviously, you can expect that. Oh, so yeah. uh, so I. I'm a little concerned. I, I want to see where this this is headed, and I hope that things stay status quo for now. <laughs> you know, yeah, because no, the exactly. last thing that we need is fuel the fires <laughs> of loot boxes and live services. You know, all I gotta say yeah. is that the way to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Very true. That's true. Very you know what? True. That's a perfect way of closing this. <laughs> yep, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly said all right guys well that brings us to the end of an awesome episode 179 the real 179 uh thanks so much for tuning in as always please go to a good game on facebook and join the conversation there and of course like subscribe and share the podcast with everyone uh this is mad dog signing off for this week mr chaos reaper all right, guys. Well, I, was, I, I always get so lost there whenever you say something else. <laughs> uh, this was a very weird episode, to say <laughs> the very much least. But I'm glad it happened, and I'm glad it's over. <laughs> can we all? Yeah, I was gonna say. Can we all agree that we're not gonna do this anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that's, let's just that's let's why. just stick to tradition okay there's, Please, a, there's a reason why they call it tradition i'm just saying this is the reason why it broke when the whole episode broke <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um all well, right mr david santos take us home uh while you guys were listening from the very beginning of this podcast uh to the very end i was able to finish control and that game is good. I don't know sometimes. I don't know sometimes. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know we'll, be, we'll be debating on this on our <laughs> Game of the Year episode. I can already see it. Oh, I'm yeah. calling it here. I'm calling oh, it here. By all means. Because in order for us to have a discussion about Game of the Year with this game, this game will need to be on a Game of the Year list. Look, sir. Oh. It will be. If freaking Nero Thomas. No, let me gonna <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I know I'm going dirty now. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. No blow, no blow. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. See you GG! Next week.